Hallelujah. Keep praying. Keep praying. Keep praying. Open up your mouth and pray. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We are still going to pray one prayer point. Matthew chapter 13. Woo. The presence of God is mighty in this place. Matthew chapter 13. We we'll read from verse 14. Matthew chapter 13. <sighs> mighty God. And in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah, which saith, By hearing ye shall hear, and shall not understand. And seeing ye shall see, and shall not perceive. Next verse. For this people's heart is wax gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes they have closed. Lest at any time they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears and should understand with their heart and should be converted and I should heal them. Next verse. But blessed are your eyes for they see and your ears for they hear. Just keep that verse there. Say blessed are your eyes for they see and your ears for they hear. Turn this into a prayer and command your eyes to see and for your ears to hear lift your voice and pray blessed are your eyes for this shalabatakata shabradiga devos lebadash kabando brahaska devalakos Shila barakato sabrande gedi balas, skade brande gade balahas sabras. Shala brande gedi balara bakuli. Are you praying, everyone? Open my eyes, so oh God. Open my eyes that I may behold wondrous things from out of your word. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Please be seated and be very sensitive while that happens to you. Be sensitive. The power of God is mighty in this place. And what the Lord is about to show us will truly be a key that will lift us in the name of Jesus. This entire seven days will be a feast of keys in the name of Jesus Christ. That God will grant us grace, spiritual illumination, Hallelujah. Tonight, very briefly, we'll start off. There is, there is so much to share. I just pray that these seven days will really allow us to do justice to these truths. Praise the Lord. But God by his word is appearing unto us and he will bless and lift us in the name of Jesus Christ the power of God is coming on someone in overflow one there is a lady in overflow one please carry the person and bring the person I want to speak to the person before we get to the word I'm seeing the hand of God rest on a lady in overflow one please bring the lady and Let's trust God for grace. 
can we still pray for that and say lord do something in my life give me results give me real results take me past the realm of guessing to the realm of mastery in the name of jesus christ the lord is saying he is bringing the captivity of your family to an end you see it will sound like a joke until you hear the testimony when Ejimi was sharing here this is the word of god comes straight and is over except the word does not come when it comes to you that is the end of it this is what we came for that we will encounter his word listen listen let me tell you something challenges are relative they are relative to the grace that confronts them challenges are not general it depends on the grace that confronts them that's why god is granting us access He's granting us illumination praise the lord illumination illumination even by his spirit this row just right here this row down i'm seeing two people who are receiving the spirit of revelation just this last row down like this this is what i'm seeing in the spirit the spirit of revelation and the spirit entered me when he spake unto me two of them and the spirit entered me when he spake unto me and set me upon my feet and the spirit entered me and the spirit entered me if someone praying let your spirit be alive you are not only watching you are receiving like kenny shared there is a grace to receive a grace to receive a grace to receive be sensitive gentlemen be sensitive grace to receive grace to receive overflow to overflow to the lord is bringing speed I'm seeing like an arrow, but this is not evil. This is a grace. A grace. Please bring them. Overflow too. Someone's hunger is touching the heavens. We'll get to the word shortly. Let's just do justice to what God is doing. God is bringing speed. Overflow too particularly overflow to speed no more delay by the spirit of god above all names in the name that is above all names in the name that is above all names God is taking away limitations 
He's doing it by His Spirit. He's taking away limitations. He's taking away limitations. He's taking away limitations. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Father, bless our hearts in the name of Jesus. Please be seated. One of the ushers, the Spirit of the Lord is saying, I should tell you, the set time has come. This is one of the ushers, just the ushers. The set time has come. The set time has come. This is a prophetic word for one of the ushers. The set time has come. That's what the Lord is saying. And when God speaks like this, there is a grace that brings and makes for performance. One of our ushers, the Lord is prophesying that your set time has come. Jeremiah chapter 9. Let's get to the word, the glory that excels. Jeremiah chapter 9, we'll start from verse 23. 23. Thus saith the Lord, please pay attention. Let not the wise man glory in his wisdom. Let not the mighty man glory in his might. Let not the rich man glory in his riches. Next verse. But let him that glorieth glory in this, that he understandeth and knoweth me. That he understandeth and knoweth me. The Bible starts by listing four categories of people alongside the fact that every of those dimensions carries glory. He starts by saying, let not the wise man glory in his wisdom. So there is glory in that level of wisdom. That wisdom there is not divine wisdom. Sophia, human wisdom, scientific wisdom, wisdom that is a product of exploring life for a long time. It says, let not, please go back 23, let not the wise man glory in his wisdom. When the Bible says to not do something, it means that it is possible to do it. Are we together? That means there is a level of glory that the wisdom of this world can bring. Then he moves to the next level. It says, neither let the mighty man glory in your might. So there is glory in might there are men and women with all kinds of might intellectual might military might and there is a level of glory that you see there number three he says let not the rich man glory in his riches it means there is glory in riches are we together that it is possible for you to be rich and there is a glory there and then he says, but let him that glory it. So in any case, there must be glory. But he's only giving you a reference. Listen carefully. He's not saying glory in strength and all of this. And he's showing you an excellent dimension. That there is glory in the wisdom of men. Are we together now? There is glory in might. There is glory in riches. However, this is the kind and the dimension. I want your glory to be a derivative of the fact that you understand and you know me. Because in understanding and knowing me, there is a representation of all these glories you forsake. That you ignore the glory that comes with the wisdom of men. You ignore the glory that comes with might aside from God. You ignore the glory that comes with riches outside of God. And then you seek to understand and know him. He says there is a glory that is in that experience. That is surpassing. Greater than the glory that comes. All of these dimensions of glory, they are there. But he's showing you that there is a glory that excels. There is a glory that excels the wisdom of men. There is a glory that excels the might of men. There is a glory that excels earthly riches. He says that glory is a product of an encounter that you understand and you know me. 
that means that if four of us stand we can both emit levels of glory but i can trace the basis of that glory i can know that your glory comes just from earthly riches your glory comes from sophia human wisdom your glory comes from the military might but i can look at a man and know that this one this glory is a product of knowing god is it not written in your bible that the people that do know their god they shall be strong and they shall do exploits the word glory is very important the glory of a thing is a measure of its worth listen carefully in the simplest term the glory of a thing is a measure of its worth a measure of its value a measure of its desirability the more glorious a person and a thing is the more you are desired the more the weight of the value that is placed on you and so imagine with me for instance that all of these dimensions are like gold that you are placing on a scale so you place the glory that comes from earthly wisdom and the scale will measure it you will write it you place the glory that comes with riches and might but then that there is a glory that the scale cannot measure when it comes from knowing God, you drop it is a glory that excels. It's an all-surpassing glory. Please pay attention. I'm building something now. So the Bible begins to contrast. Number one, he says it is important that the saints glory, but it tells you what to glory in. Because herein is our Father glorified when you bear much fruit. In your being glorified, God is being glorified. John 17, Jesus said, The hour has come. Glorify now thy son, that thy son may give you glory. Meaning an unglorified saint cannot bring glory to the Father. The glory of the Father is in the glory of the saints. Are we together now? That if there is a dimension of glory the saints do not express, it will short circuit the understanding of creation about God. Glorify now thy son, that thy son will bring you glory. Add weight to your son, add desirability. Put something within him that the rich outside you cannot have. Put something within him that the wise outside you cannot have. That when you stand on the scale of destiny is a weight that cannot be measured. The glory that excels. Hmm. In Mark chapter 2, Jesus taught a mystery that I want to connect to this very quickly. His mysteries were captured in his parables. And in one of the parables, he teaches us on the mystery of wineskins please give us verse 18 mark chapter 2 there is a glory that excels and the disciples of john and the pharisees and you know and they came home to him and said to him why do the disciples of john and of the pharisees fast oh dear but thy disciples fast not. 19. And Jesus said, he's replying a question. Remember that the foundation of this question was the issue of rituals, structures, systems. Keep that in mind. So he was challenging Jesus' violation of a system. This is the basis for this statement. There is a methodology. There is a way things were done. And now they found out that Jesus was routing his system. He was not conforming to what they were doing and they, they were questioning his authority. What gave you the audacity to come up with another formula? We are used to this. This is the ritual. But now Jesus, we see you mentoring your disciples through another route. And Jesus is replying, Can the children of the bridegroom or bride chamber fast while the bridegroom is with them? As long as they have the bridegroom with them, they cannot fast. 20. But the days will come when the bridegroom shall be taken away from them and then they shall fast in those days. 21. It says no man. Now listen. 
he's buttressing on this point now no man also sewed a piece of new cloth on an old garment else the new piece that filled it up take it away from the old and the rent is made worse are we together now next verse and no man put it new wine into old bottles or an old wine skin why else the new wine doth bust the bottles and the wine is spilled and the the bottles will be marred but the new wine must not may be put in a new wine skin listen very carefully jesus is teaching them something here very powerful and then he now brings this his parables on the cloth and then more importantly the wine skin he's saying that if you put wine skin i hope you know that the wine skin he now calls old was once new don't forget that what he now calls old was by a reference new and now he's saying that if you are bringing new wine that it is not possible to bring new wine and put it in an old wine skin that the effect it would be better to have left the old wine and the old wine skin that if you try to mix them there will be a reaction and that that reaction will make the condition worse listen carefully there is a reason why revivals never last there is a reason why the move of God comes for a while revival 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 people organize programs and for one or two weeks people feel spiritual they feel connected and one month later everyone has gone back to his ways the reason is because we continue to violate the condition that makes for new wine to be comfortable the focus is never on the new wine he says you attract new wine by doing something to the wine skin you don't ask new wine to come something must happen to the wine skin that automatically attracts new wine listen carefully wine skin in scripture is symbolic of structures and systems you have to understand this it's not only just symbolic of a man it's symbolic of methodologies and strategies that for every move of God there is a pattern and there is a spiritual formation that can contain it and host it are we together now I shared with you in one of the services how that when it came to killing the Philistines God gave Samson a revelation and he took the dry bone jaw bone of an ass and he killed the philistines with it as soon as he was done he was asked to throw it sometimes you don't throw things because they have stopped working you throw them because they will not be needed again although they are still working the bible never said the old wine skin were already torn it could still contain it but that new wine in an old wine skin cannot last every move of God and every dimension of glory has a spiritual formation that you must assume otherwise the glory will not be comfortable around you and it will be wasted this is what Jesus is teaching that anything anything that is new from heaven that is coming the focus is not on what is coming the focus is on the preparation Ejimi shared that scripture powerfully here. When it was time for them to experience the glory of God, there were conditions. He said, sanctify yourself. One day is not enough. Two days is not enough. Three days is not enough. Prepare yourself. And even at that, when they saw the glory they were preparing for, they said, Moses, you go and just talk with God. Whatever he tells you, tell us. We will listen. Most people are not prepared for what they pray for because the glory of God, listen, is one thing to ask and continue to ask. One of the reasons why the glory of God may elude certain people, the weightiness of his presence, it may be that we continue to desire that the new wine comes upon the old wine skin. And God says, my not giving you is an act of my mercy because there will be a reaction when the new wine comes upon the old wine skin that your condition will be worse than you currently are 
that means it is possible to dish out revelation and a believer's life starts failing from the day he had that revelation it is not only error that destroys there is a dimension of truth you can bring and from the day the believer received it his life begins to go down because the effect of that new wine on his old wine skin creates room for his own destruction this is not a demon this is not satan this is a spiritual reaction jesus is teaching us here so he's giving us a word of caution that if it is true that you need a new wine skin then you must find out the structure when the glory of God was going to rest upon the tabernacle in the Old Testament at that time the tabernacle was a new wine skin so Bezalel and Aholiab had to receive from God the blueprint the kind of tabernacle that can host the glory they were praying for are we together now they were never to be left to decide God come read your Bible God never comes until the people are prepared by his standards not by their desire not by their cry not by their hunger whenever God wants to come bringing his anointing his grace and all the possibilities contained in him there will be a requirement you cannot put new wine in an old wine skin we're talking about the glory of God here that there is a glory that excels but i'm showing you the technology by which men transit to rise to superior realms every old wine was once a new wine this is what i want you to know no old wine starts as old wine the tabernacle the law was once new wine the tabernacle in the wilderness was once new wine but a day came when god said i'm connecting this story now they were used to the new wine they saw the glory that came with the tabernacle the ark of the covenant they saw the victories that it brought for them now jesus appears and then they are saying jesus if you are from god you must fit into this structure and he says i agree it was one a new wine skin but now i'm bringing in something do you have the flexibility and the unashamedness to restructure and adjust your vessel and sometimes replace it completely so that you can host the new he was speaking to scribes he was speaking to pharisees when they saw his miracles and they saw the things that he did they looked at their structure and wondered why those structures did not host that thing i hope you know god was the one who instituted their structure but god had left their structure once upon a time john was the new wine skin that was being used the theology that John brought was the most current dealing of the spirit John was in the wilderness and God was giving him mysteries until then there was nobody who could stand as anything newer than John Jesus himself testified that of all the prophets no matter what they saw nobody read John's dimension of glory but John was wise when Jesus came he said behold the lamb and John said look I know that with respect to this I have become an old wine skin let me decrease that he will increase are you seeing that technology I decrease this is the vessel that God is pouring his glory and when you look up to him then you are not ashamed John departed and his disciples were offended because at a the point they felt John what are you doing you were shining you were the person at the center stage your entire theology was what we built our lives on and right now you are asking us are you trying to say all you have taught us was error and John was trying to say no I'm only showing you that there is another dimension of glory that has come and my structure cannot hold that glory I was a forerunner now that that glory has come follow that glory amazing that John himself didn't follow the glory and not even him was spared John died whereas others were being resurrected there was a provision in a new structure that John could not experience he died in offense he died in pain 
he died hating Jesus he died probing the messiahship of Jesus the man who ordained Jesus to ministry the man who caused that his heavens were open he said go and ask him are you the Messiah or should we seek for another notice that every time they fought Jesus they didn't just fight the miracles they fought the wine skin the structure why are you coming with another pattern they caught a woman who was in adultery and there was a structure already that when this woman is caught you don't discuss you stone her and immediately Jesus looks at them and create another order listen to me you cannot put new wine skin new revelation new anointing new glory structure that does not have the provision to receive it the question is to sustain the sacrifice and the flexibility that even if it means to tear the old wine to give way let me tell you that's not as easy as it sounds that's why we are here tonight if it was that easy many people will carry the glory that excels the hardest part of the coming of the glory is not its arrival it is the level of stretching that happens to a man to have the new wine skin that makes for the space that this new glory will come upon that's why we are here we can we can shout and jump and say greater anointing oh god greater this do you know that the level of living is not the same every level of glory has its rules and conditions this is it so we may be born again but the spiritual levels and the levels of glory that come out of us will have certain rules because of the level god has taken you he will give you a rule that is only applicable to you on earth no other person it may not make sense but that is the price to keep the wine skin new and we will never settle for less we know there's more that's found in you and we will never settle for less when we know there's more that's found in you i wrote something down here listen that every level of glory has its demands there is a price to pay for every dimension of the glory of god that we seek to have many people think it's just automatic just because jesus died no sir there is a demand for every face and every level of glory the new wine skin is formed when you are willing to subscribe to the terms that make for higher glory you form the new wine skin by making a decision that lord i desire this dimension of your glory i desire this dimension of your weightiness your presence upon my life now please listen listen somewhere along this conference we are going to be doing an impartation but many of us let me be sincere with you the reason why so many men of god continue to pray and lay hands on you and they bless you from their heart you can go around and say i met bishop oedeko i met papa deboye have you met this yes but nothing in your life reflects the glory because there was a repulsion their prayer brought the glory but it met a structure that would not allow it you see that you believe that you receive because you fell down but i'm telling you now that your falling down was not your receiving look at the street condition elisha went through to carry a mantle i hope you know it was elijah that was teaching other people they were the students in the school of the spirit yet it was not enough for them to carry the, the bible testifies they were in his school Think how much of an angry man Elijah was. I won't be surprised that Elijah slapped Elisha once. That kind of tamper that calls fire. Will you want to work with such a person? Once upon a time, Elijah was the new wine skin. And the wine skin kept looking for a replacement. All over, he looked at the entire prophet, and none of them had the formation. None, not once. And there was a man who kept stretching himself 
went beyond Gilgal, went all through. And while that was happening, Elijah was watching. Elijah continued to frustrate him intentionally. And that guy would not be offended. Look at all the attributes that were preparing him for that mantle. Then when they crossed beyond Jordan, Elijah looks at him and says you are really desperate I, I see the formation you are looking like me now the the kind of alignment I I remember this and I know that you are about to receive something and he says what do you want then the man said sir with all due respect I know where you stopped I went more than that I can take twice you could not take twice your own anointing where you stopped I respect it but my I stretch myself beyond the capacity of that level of grace and he said one more test young man the last test was the test of sight the test of sight not just the test of physical endurance all right you have qualified but one last test if it is true that you stretch the way you claim something should have happened to your eyes and so let me see if you really pass the test because anyone who stretches enough for a double portion something should have happened to his eyes it is impossible to say you have stretched like that and your eyes is still blind therefore my dear son if you can see me as i rise and he looked and suddenly the eyes he said i see you oh my father my father the chariots of israel and the horsemen thereof listen the anointing came without confusion and he went to jordan he said where is the lord god of elijah he parted it and it parted hither and thither and the moment that happened the prophet saw him and they said the spirit of elijah taught rest on elijah they were so ignorant they didn't even know it was two times it was a double portion graces don't just come anointings don't just come there is a glory that excels listen carefully prosperity does not just come liftings don't just come i tell you the reason why the move of god and the treasures of the kingdom never stay on people it will come for a while and then our lack of structure will fight it and it will go so you find out that churches experience certain moves of the spirit for three weeks strange signs and wonders angelic encounters and then it leaks they never experience it again could this be why sometimes when prophecy comes the results happen slowly and then it lifts because you receive the prophecy it came from heaven but the spiritual formation that will allow it says now arise oh god from where you are we have prepared a structure that will make you feel comfortable whether you are in heaven or you are in solomon's temple now arise oh lord it says come to your resting place this is even how demons work they don't just enter anybody they search for a formation that looks like where they are coming from or better than it so when a demon looked at a man he knows you are not aligned enough for manipulation so it will continue to create systems around your life that tilt you to be aligned enough then it can come was it not in your bible that when a demon leaves a man when it is returning it doesn't return alone it doesn't just return double portion it gathers seven of its kind comes for many years I wanted to know the mystery behind the very heavy investment of God's presence in others as against others and I gauged it by many parameters and I found out it didn't match I gauged it by many spiritual parameters until i found out that this was the secret now arise O lord come to your resting place that means consistently from heaven mantles and graces and new levels are searching they continue to move around every service looking for new wineskins and they may not find wineskins here is the answer 
to why men can be in church for many years and someone will just come and receive the person came with hunger he had stretched himself someone else is standing amen 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 and nothing is happening let me tell you my brothers and my sisters i will show you what to do to the wine skin and then you will see the kind of glory and power that will come upon your life my life changed and the grace of God upon my life took another dimension all of these dimensions you see me walking in they were never there I prayed and said Lord what is the secret thank God for impartation but I knew that mm -mm, impartation is the last step to this thing there is a way why did Elijah have to go through this laborious journey with Elisha why There is a huge price for the glory that excels you want to speak and let things just happen you want god to touch the hearts of men no this thing is not acting my brothers and my sisters it is not even just about praying 10 hours it is not even just about fasting dry fast there is something that must happen from within now arise, O oh Lord, come to your resting place, you and the ark of your might, and then we will rejoice as we clothe in your righteousness, celebrate. I remember some years ago one night I, I will never forget that night I was watching William Branham and tears filled my eyes that night I was so tired I was sleepy but I was watching him and you know the whole documentary on him and I said why do people insult this man you know they make it look like he backslided he left God just because he missed some things here and there there are graces that when you carry I will show you there is you have to ask God to help you stand the heaviness of that grace even you God will have to support you otherwise you will not stand I had a vision I will share with you some visions that I've never shared here during this conference let me finish the William Branham story we're going to pray I remember that night I was looking at this man and for the first time a sense of honor and compassion i said this is an amazing servant of god the humility that came from that man's life versus all the nonsense that ignorant people kept saying i said look at this look at this man of god look at the grace that comes out of this man and something strange happened to me it was like light from my laptop something cold just rested on my head gradually I didn't used to walk in the prophetic here and there maybe word of knowledge this and that here and there and something cold gradually it took more than 30 minutes it was entering me the next meeting I went to it was like a shock that was when I started seeing angelic presence like lights like ribbons and I said what is this that I'm seeing let me tell you mantles are still looking for men the problem is that there are too many old wineskins structures that refuse to bend structures that refuse to adjust one day I kept praying I wrote the names of certain fathers of faith that I was praying that God would put upon me the grace that he put upon them and then I had a dream in that dream i was in canaan land i think then okay they just a few years after they had built uh let's see no i'm not sure it was more than it wasn't yet up to 10 years since they built the the auditorium there and then i found myself preaching and just like the stage here i was standing you have to just keep your toe just the tip of your toe that's how you stand to preach and the stage was shaking and i couldn't stand well and I said, is this how these guys stand to preach? That's what I saw in that vision. That means all you see is not just standing on stage. 
many people are standing on there are weights there are gracious people carry that the moment you talk about them in the secret that grace was designed because of the weightiness there are extra privileges that come with it you will find out that your heavens will close alone in the secret no demonic assistance just because of the weightiness of it it is true my brothers and my sisters that even among the stars one different from another in glory in glory this that looks small is a deep spiritual secret it's possible to remain at the same level and god sees that you are better off at that level but if it is the glory that excels that you want to receive a dimension of his weightiness you want to add weight to your spiritual life the requirement is not just prayer the requirement is not just bible study i'm going to show you the requirement turn with me please very quickly to second corinthians chapter 4 many of you have not been trained to have regard for the glory of god that comes upon men second corinthians chapter 4 from verse 17 please for our light affliction which is but for a moment what is the affliction doing walk it for us stop stop there is a raw material that trains men the bible calls it affliction i know you don't <laughs> for this hammer that i use walk it in me this vessel that affliction is like a hammer that can chisel a man he may not know what is happening but there is a a, a formation happening our light affliction apostle paul is writing that walk it for us a what i told you there is a glory that excels if it is that weight of glory you want there is a dimension of affliction that the bible says it is a tool that is used you don't like the nice message i know <laughs> hmm. what do you think makes god to have a covenant with a man not old testament not new testament what do you think empowers that you make a statement and god just honors you reading the bible just praying in the night no sir no sir there are secrets one of them is your volunteering to affliction it was it didn't it say i bear in my he said let no man trouble me i carry a glory that excels and here are the scars that show for it let no demon resist me because i carry a glory that excels and here is the scar that shows you want to be an envoy of his presence you want to host the glory of god you want to host the power of god let me tell you there are some sacrifices if you make in the kingdom god will not allow you make other kinds again forever it is true it is true sir there are men and women because of the sacrifice they've had with god god will never allow them to learn about money again in this life it will never happen it's an exemption for them because of what there is an accreditation that happened in that place of pain I always wondered why so many people broke certain principles that I knew that made for certain results and then it looks like life will punish everybody and jump them life will punish everybody and jump them and I said why and God said I am just find out they paid an equivalent of that sacrifice already it is true my brothers and my sisters it is true there is a glory that excels but the bible says for our light affliction 
which is but for a moment walked in us a far more exceeding weight of glory next verse it says while we look not at the things what are the things the afflictions the things that are seen but the things that are unseen it says for the things that are seen are temporal temporal but the things which are not seen are eternal romans chapter 8 from verse 18 for i reckon that the sufferings you know this is paul writing i hope you know it was the same paul that wrote to third of the new testament when paul says i glory in my affliction now you understand what he was saying how do you glory in affliction believers tell me how you glory in affliction that a man is in chains and bonds and he calls it glory I wish what I were telling you were not true was it not because of what Mary was going to carry that all the trouble came upon her life Mary was an innocent virgin for God's sake minding her business and here comes this young carpenter you just ask her out all of a sudden an angel comes and says Mary there is something we are, we are looking for who can carry it we have been searching other women and they refused probably some had the dream and they casted it mm, leave me i want peace in my life and here comes mary let me tell you if everyone were available the angel would not come it looked like gabriel had been searching and finally he says let me try this one we bring you salutation of great joy and she wondered what salutation he said this is what will happen to you and then the woman says be it unto me she thought she was saying let me be pregnant no the process that will allow me to carry the word for nine months be it unto me from that day mary got in trouble to the point that joseph was saying madam i don't know what is it that happened between you and this ghost i don't know which rabbi you are calling an angel but i i won't embarrass you but me i'm going what happens when things start going down and it started the day god spoke to you you were minding your business and it looked like you were better off the day a voice came you will be a mighty man of god from that day your life it looks like god what i was minding myself i was living a happy quiet wonderful life then you go to lie down and sleep and you are seeing a generation and you say god please leave my peace i want my plan is to live a nice life ah. this is the price for carrying the burden of a generation king of kings lord of lords faithful and true lamb of god we worship King of kings, Lord of lords, faithful and true, Lamb of God, we worship you. I preached a message years ago called the furnace of affliction. And several people said all kinds of things against the message and I said, oh dear. God has an economy. God has a non-negotiable system. This is the reason why he loves everybody, but not everybody carries the same weight of glory. My brothers and my sisters, the glory of God upon a man is not dependent on his predetermined counsel. It's how much you are willing to be stretched until you are reformed. Like the potter, sometimes you will need to smash that clay again and start building. You built it before into a vessel and then you will smash it back and that clay is you. Hallelujah. It's a very, very huge sacrifice to carry the glory of God. The weightiness of His presence. Most times we admire the results that we see 
but let me tell you my brothers and my sisters behind the veil what you see there is the blood and the tears that came with lifting this weight it's a heavy weight a far more exceeding weight of glory a far more exceeding weight of glory hallelujah that you speak to a man and his life does not change you go back to god and say lord why now i spoke and god says no there is a glory level there is there not every part of the mountain delivers the same result it says who shall ascend to the hill of the lord it's a journey if an aircraft will not keep you at the top of the hill you will walk there were five thousand men aside women and children who climb up the mountain and they were privy to hear certain things that others did not hear the way to the throne is the cross the way to the throne is the cross you will never get to the throne ignoring the cross the only ladder that you will use to climb the throne of destiny is the cross where God will give you a governmental grace to speak over nations you become Bula and Hephzibah the desire of nations notice in the parable of the talents do you know the real blessing that happened to them it was not well done good and i used to think he was well done good and faithful servant until one day the spirit of the lord says study it and i found out well done good and faithful servant was a pattern of their back certain portions were up, were given to them territorial influences that was the blessing the labor of doing something with what they were given qualified them for these dimensions at every level at every level please listen to me carefully at every level there is a demand there is a level of sacrifice there is a level of real sacrifice that makes for certain glories but paul said compared to the glory that that level delivers the sacrifice can be called a light affliction second corinthians chapter 3 we are going to pray from verse 9 and 10. it says for if the ministration of condemnation talking about the law now carried some glory in it he said much more doth the ministration of righteousness exceed in glory next verse it says for even that which was made glorious had no glory in this respect by reason of the glory that excels that there is a level you can walk with god my brothers and my sisters and through this sacrifice of remolding yourself to become a new wine skin that god will put a dimension of his glory that when you look back what you used to call glory that it is not glory in this respect a level of signs and wonders a level of the performance of god's word a level of increase and grace a level of prosperity the wealth of the kingdom a level of spiritual illumination it comes by that track record of pain and sacrifice sacrifice the weightiness of god's glory finding vessels that can fit it the weightiness of god's power finding vessels that can receive it the weightiness of the spirit of revelation finding men there are times that it comes close and you fall it you can't even host it first and then it goes back waiting for you to truly become that vessel it says but we all like living stones we are being chiseled and built into a spiritual house a house that can host god 
there are many things in my life today I would have prayed for for so long to come but sometimes just a desire in my heart is enough to bring it the secret is that when you contend for the glory that excels please hear me if you're a man of God here hear me twice what we call ministry now in the next five years many people will be frustrated because there are people pressing into these dimensions genuinely there are people that desire tangibility substance of the spirit they are the ones who will become the desire of nations and many others will pale and fade in glory this is not backsliding this is that God has begun something is a new order and like John the Baptist and like the scribes you may scrounge around for relevance but the light now is on Jesus the question therefore is are you willing to subscribe to the demands demands of lifestyle demands of covenant listen it will cost you everything the price for all of God is all of you let me say it again the price for all of God is all of you write it media let the word lend this the price for God's head is not all of you the price for God's hand is not all of you the price for God's heart and all of him is all of you that's why we can see certain dimensions you just want the wisdom of God or some dimensions of his creativity but not all of him if you want to host God then all of you must be beaten like the potter with the clay it's not a gospel that many people like nobody likes suffering nobody likes affliction we were not designed that way that's why it's a sacrifice there is a glory that excels but it will come upon vessels that have been worked on changed he says now the lord is that spirit and where the spirit of the lord is there is liberty then it says we all with unveiled face beholding him as in a glass we are changed you know it looks like once you are just looking you are being changed ask elisha it was not just looking like it was saying there is a dynamics of death that works in you so that life will work in other people let me tell you this 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 thing i'm teaching you is a is a master mystery even in the occult and those who practice all of these things they are the level of glory in quote if i will use that word is corresponding to their the level of tremendous sacrifice i remember reading a book about a, a somebody who would receive some kind of strange power and the condition was to fast non-stop for 150 days if you miss one day you start afresh you don't continue you fast to a point that you don't know whether you have eaten or not there is your body has lost the ability to tell you whether you are full or you are hungry so god will want to take you to certain realms and god will now say oh pastor alpha because of what i'm about to do for the next five months i will need every 12 to 3 a.m of your time not three to five regardless of what the event is the demand is 12 o'clock to three the next six months think about it if you are interested let me know you will be free from 9 to 11 that's not the timing God gave you you will even be free from 40 forever you will find out that you will be so tired by 11 45 you don't know if you are standing or sitting but you remember that our light affliction you may look stupid see it's difficult to do these things when you have people that love you they will pity you too much to allow you continue the pain of what you go through it will attract their sympathy that's why abraham told the servants wait here i have to go alone with my sacrifice if those servants were on the mountain they will fight abraham and bring isaac down there are certain things when god wants to do in your life 
you will, you will have to agree with him that you will be alone in this so that he can do with you what he wants because the innocence and the humanity of men sometimes will interrupt the process if you're married and you see your husband eating once a week and acting like a strange man one day you will be tired you will close the door and sit down there and start crying and whether he's, he's serious with God or not the compassion that comes from that union will make him say God whatever it is please let me just let me just let me just subscribe to the demands of my wife what do you think made John the greatest prophet have you studied John's life how much of his life was in public view look at how John was born from that time at least for Jesus we saw what happened the first 12 years what happened to the next 18 years of Jesus is something you should find out because the Bible does not tell us any other thing again about Jesus from age 12 until 30 we see a man coming what happened for those 18 years what happened to the 19 years of Paul in the wilderness of Arabia what happened to the 40 years of Moses at the backside of the mountain let me show you that this is consistent with men who carry glory it is not new it didn't start now are we together John the Baptist the Bible just shows us that there is an adult in the wilderness who was given a, a what I would call a wicked prescription there was meat those days there was fish those days there was wine those days but he dressed in camel skin and then he was in the wilderness and the only food that he was allowed to eat was locusts and wild honey was he not the prophet that was told to sleep on one side for one year i don't know if you don't read your bibles did you read about the prophet who ate animal dung for one year I tell you why our generation is powerless we are noisy people but there's no power this is it we hate the sacrificial dimension that brings the glory let him that glory and glory in this that he knoweth me he understands my way and because of his subscribing to my patterns he can carry a glory that is greater than the glory of the wise greater than the glory of the strong greater than the glory of the rich there are men let me tell you i believe that there are people who will open up their hearts and say lord i am willing let's go this journey i am willing i am willing you know most times we sing songs of surrender we just sing them as special numbers i want you now to think because god answers those prayers use me oh god i'm available and god says i'm listening keep talking do with me anything you want to do uh, have you had that kind of prayer god says thank you this is all i've been asking you it's a dangerous prayer to say do with me what you want it's even dangerous to sing it do with me what you want do with me what you want you study the scapegoat that was taken malhandled and taken everywhere he was led like a sheep to the slaughter do with me what you want lord my life is yours do with me what you want and god says okay i look at you and i need to chisel here and here can i go on and you say lord i've said do with me what you want the first hammer touching you you say god is this it no i changed my mind is it by force i'm already born again god says it's not by force but then the glory you seek do not be angry when you see it on another person so many men of God can be here but there is glory that excels corresponding to the spiritual sacrifices let me tell you this is a non-negotiable condition there are cups you don't pray to pass you you obtain the grace to drink them he said grant that 
you know when you have conquered caesar etc etc let me sit at your left and right the mother of james and john was asking jesus didn't say there is no vacancy he said you want to sit close to me here is the condition one can you drink of my cup internal and can you be baptized with my baptism the woman didn't answer it for the children john would later answer it and he paid for it he really did he was at the isle of patmos but that guy had so pressed into these things that hot oil had no effect on him and Peronero said, what do we do with this guy now? We have tried to roast him in oil. It didn't work. And they banished him to an isle called Patmos. These are the men, the Bible says, the earth is not worthy of. There is a reason why the earth is not worthy. They walk sometimes like fugitives and vagabonds, looking for a city whose builder and maker is the Lord. They so pressed into these things for some of them, life made no sense again. Take all of me, all of me, Lord. You have my everything. Use all of me, all of me, Lord. You have my everything. Anoint my everything. Use my everything. I release my everything. You have my everything. Say, take all of me, all of me, Lord. You have my everything. Take all of me, all of me, Lord. You have my everything. I thought Jesus, being the Son of God, Jakes, should should exempt him from this pattern why will the son of god be in the wilderness talk to me believers the son of god left heaven born of the spirit it didn't change the pattern as soon as jesus came out of the water it was not a demon that drove him there are many times what drives you to that wilderness is not always satan the spirit didn't speak he drove him to the wilderness notice that every time these men were in these places they were alone it's not a corporate thing it's not a husband and wife thing it's not a classmate it's not a roommate thing it is you and god and your destiny this is the price it takes to be trusted with the keys of a generation this is the price it takes to become the face of god to a generation it's not by voting it's not by popularity census it's not by likes and shares it's a testament of a sacrifice in the spirit known by both god and demons believers either we are just playing games and we truly do not desire to be the carriers of this glory or someone here will be willing to pray listen let me tell you you would think the sacrifice to host God's glory is hard until you see the alternative. The alternative is a miserable life of guessing left, right, and center with your destiny shattered and you are, you are a victim of just anything. Jesus paid the price once and he was ready. By this time, many years ago, Jesus was in hell hellfire jesus hellfire jesus hades the place of the dead and the father was watching and all these demons were upon their own creator the word of god that proceeded ah but though weeping endures for a night shabalakabarakosia one thing i know is that affliction does not remain forever it has an expiry date when the legal claims of justice were made paul reveals to us by the spirit that jesus made a public show of them triumphing over them and one of the things he got in hell so there can be keys in hell and you will need to go down to hell to get some keys <laughs> 
sometimes you will need to go down to come up with keys jesus descended before he ascended so you will rise up by going down are we together now and he collected the keys and in revelations he said i am he that was dead but now i am alive and i hold the keys the coronation service only happened when he went through this we are going to pray tonight there is a glory that excels i bring you a very powerful mystery the glory that excels romans chapter 12 and verse 1 i beseech thee brethren who is he talking to brethren not unbelievers i beseech thee brethren by the mercies of god that you do what offer offer your bodies as a not a sacrifice a living sacrifice let me tell you what that means a sacrifice that remains a sacrifice when a sacrifice dies it stops being a sacrifice it's over the real sacrifice was the life of that object so when the life goes there's no more sacrifice it is the process of extracting life from that thing that is the sacrifice now he says you are a sacrifice you are alive but it's a posture you will continue to take holy and acceptable unto god and he says it's your reasonable act of worship i have found this key from the day i found this key i stopped being afraid of pain i stopped being afraid of sacrifice i became friends with it and i found out that in that darkness that's where light comes from god who had commanded light to shine out of darkness not into darkness out of darkness darkness is the mother that gives birth to light and the evening came and the morning and the evening came and the morning let me encourage you listen to me listen to me very carefully be careful so that you don't judge things from the standpoint of men there are certain things that you may be passing through that you may think these things are happening just because of unbelief i told you that faith doesn't always receive it also takes faith to release you lose things too by faith by faith abel offered a more excellent sacrifice there were women who their children died and instead of them to raise them back they said no problem let them go and the bible calls it faith read it it's not everybody who brought their child back to life that were called men of faith others died do you know why plants grow because they subscribe to this same principle death and glory when you carry a seed and throw it on the earth what happens you studied agri what happens the life is in the death jakes you come back after two days if you open it you will see that there is no more beauty there is no beauty in the grave there is no comeliness there is only the death that brings resurrection and notice what happens the first thing that happens is some process of decay and even degradation and then out of the rottenness it begins to open it's deshaping as bad as it is it's making room for something new and sometimes it can be so bad that part of the old one will come out too with a new one and you can look at it and know this is the dead seed and this is the one that grows I wish I can tell you the glory of God comes just by speaking and saying receive grace there are you want to be given the keys of a nation my brother and my sister there is a track record there is a scar there is a testament of death that must happen 
I presume we are going to pray tonight because it looks like we are in a funeral service. You know what you do in a funeral service? You dig the ground and you carry the dead body and throw it in. But when you throw the body in the funeral service, you don't expect it to come out. But what we are engaging tonight is a mystery. That when you are thrown in the grave, then you are ready to come out. After a few days of silence, suddenly, suddenly, you begin to shoot against gravity with another life. And that small, tiny seed will now become a tree that birds will come and nest. They will be grateful that you paid the price. Every food you eat today is because a seed volunteered to die. Listen to me carefully. If seeds stop dying, you stop rising too. The reason why we continue to live is because there are seeds that are dying. They died last year. The moment rain starts falling. Isn't it amazing that when rain starts falling, that's the right time for the seed to die. Seeds die during rain. Rain that should give life. But that's when seeds die. And then life comes from it. We're going to pray. In the next... 10 minutes it's going to be a general prayer before i lead you find whatever corner outside this is you and god just play worship for us and you are going to say lord the death that must turn me into a new wine skin let it happen to me tonight the death that must happen oh god for the glory that this generation is waiting for don't be afraid the sacrifice Lord you are calling me to be a prophet to the nations but there is a level of death please pray this is between you and God let hope rise. Darkness trembles in your holy love. Let hope, let it rise. Darkness trembles in your holy love. Pray. 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 Era ba she na na ma she na 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 na. Era na na he na 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 he na 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 he. Lira sabaru jalis kamanda brati gala shobras kadi alhasa. Whosoever saves his life shall lose it. Whosoever saves his life shall lose it. Whosoever saves his life shall lose it. But whoever loses it for my sake will gain it. We gain things in this kingdom by losing them. Halabaranda zana kaparuza seketazi ana kaparuza sia. Hira balana ba, hira da da da, hira da da da, hira da da da. Take my body, my soul, my spirit, breathe on me. 
Take my body, my soul, my spirit. Breathe on me. Are there people praying tonight? Take my body, my soul, my spirit. Breathe on me. Yeah. Breathe on me. Yeah. Breathe on me. Walk through me. Yeah. Live through me. Shed Amatala Namasya. Oh, come with the refiner's fire. 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 As the deer pants after the water brook, find a generation, my king. Find a generation that desires you more than life, more than wisdom, more than money, more than power. Find for yourself a bride adorned in her beauty. everything turn me oh god to the wine skin that will host your power in this generation turn me oh god to the wine skin that will host the end time anointing for miracles for wealth for signs for wonders Yeshua Hamashiach Komi na na kane Yeshua Hamashiach Komi na na kane Komi na na kane Komi na na kane Komi na na kane Yeshua Hamashiach 
Two or three more minutes. But in a great house, there are vessels of gold and of silver, of wood and of clay. Some are unto honor and others are unto dishonor. belongs to you hey oh me na na ye shuwa amashi ga ye ye shuwa amashi ga ye ye shuwa amashi ga Yeshua, Yeshua, You see, my brothers and my sisters, one of the assignments of fire the primary purpose of fire was not just for demons it was for the saints it is the fire of the holy spirit it's not just holy ghost fire demons the fire not only refines not only purifies it can melt completely and then remold again it is not every time the fire comes to just purify sometimes that whole vessel needs to melt down for something new to come it is not every time god comes to adjust the old sometimes he comes to immerse you into his fire then remold you as something that has never been before Yeshua Hamashia Komi na na kane Yeshua Komi na na kane I'd like you tonight to pray Lord whatever took your place in my life please return to your resting place Is someone praying tonight I don't know how it got there 
but in this season arise majesty return to your resting place arise my god return to your place of rest for some of us is friends some of us is the obsession to succeed some of us is the obsession to be in ministry whatever has taken its place please dethrone it this night dethrone it this night for some of us it's money that took his place reputation ego revelation the quest for the anointing in this season let me tell you the new wine of the spirit is moving from nation to nation from continent to continent finding the vessels that have the space there are all kinds of mantles graces that have not been seen before but they are searching for a new wine skin you cannot put new wine in an old wine skin you cannot put a new prophetic wine in an old prophetic wine skin a new apostolic wine in an old apostolic wine skin a new territorial wine in an old territorial wine skin let us leave the old and press for the new press for the new press for the new pray just one more minute and then we'll pray corporately that's why we came tonight without new wine you cannot have the new songs without new wine you cannot have the new sermons you will keep recycling the old copying from man of god to man of god it will take new wine to understand the rhythm of the spirit Yeshua. hallelujah praise the lord listen to me we have a few more minutes just a few minutes and then we'll stop acts chapter 26 and verse 22 there are times in your life listen where because of the kind of glory that is coming no matter how you release yourself you will still not have the capacity you will need to cry for an assistance from heaven it says having therefore obtained help of god i continue unto this day the reason i'm still standing from glory to glory i saturated my effort at a point but having obtained help from god i continue to this day having obtained help from god in the apostolic ministry in the prophetic ministry in the pursuit to bring the wealth of the kingdom to the saints in the pursuit to doing this and that whatever it is there are times when you stretch yourself to the limit and it still cannot make for the size of the glory 
you will need to turn to the helper of zion it says having therefore obtained help of god i continue it takes the help of god to keep going there are times you will reach your elastic limit you will stretch and break to pieces you will still not meet god's standard is someone ready to cry for help from heaven lord assist me assist me let 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 the divine help the alignment it will take to command the wealth of the kingdom in this season lord assist me there is only so much i can do the alignment that will be required to carry the apostolic and the prophetic grace i cry for help having obtained help from god i continue god is the helper of men god can help you he can help you rise he can help you stand he can help you reign he can help you conquer he has not stopped being the helper the holy spirit is called the helper hallelujah hallelujah please pair yourselves in twos if you can just hold someone those under the anointing or just alone just leave them but hold your hands you are going to cry to heaven agreeing with that person say lord a superior realm of results a new dimension of grace glory that is all encompassing i receive it agree 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 with somebody pray outside pray those online pray this is the season oh god of the glory that excels in ministry in business the glory that excels the glory that excels the weightiness, the desirability that excels, that I become the desire of nations, I become the desire of kings. Please pray. Shekete Rapa papa ruto totos endere ketos kelebash rakata paruto shobregede prato sosi dabiash e prakato sesekata from paruta sopragede baladaba em prokoto shekete lebarash hallelujah hallelujah Psalm 45, verse 12. I believe it is. The Lord just put it in my heart. This is the level that God is taking us to. I hope you remember the teaching I did about Tyre and Sidon. The marketplace of the earth. Where the exchange is made. It says, and the daughter of Tyre shall be there with a gift. He says, even the rich among the people shall entreat your favor. There is an investment of the spirit that comes upon your life. Listen, I want to show you how this relates to extraordinary fruitfulness. There are realms where you will not beg and search for. Your sacrifice and your investment will cause nobles to come with what you would have looked for. The daughter of Tyre will come with a gift. The gift you would have been searching for. And then the rich among the people, not the poor. There is a grace because you left looking for the glory of wealth to seek his face. He will cause those who have the glory of the wealth to come to entreat your favor. 
listen that means wealth is not favor because there is a favor that even the rich are looking for what is it they are not coming to just look at you there is something money cannot buy the rich will entreat your favor they will come to you and it will be a privilege to give them audience i like you to pray and say lord on account of the glory you are putting upon my life even in this season let the daughter of tyre begin to come with her gift and let the kings of these systems come with their treasures to entreat my favor please lift your voice and pray pray with understanding pray with understanding because i have subscribed to the glory that comes from your face not the glory that comes from wealth not the glory that comes from human wisdom not the glory that comes from human might the glory that comes from knowing you let the daughter of tyre come with her gift let the nobles of the earth begin to entreat my favor pray for koinonia in this season kings coming to entreat your favor hallelujah the bible says that a time will come when seven virgins it was a prophetic statement seven virgins will hold on to one man that spiritual jew they are not holding on to him just because he's handsome there is something that the tribe he comes from carries and seven dimensions that have not been seen come to you and say we want to be part of your life we want to be featured in your destiny such a force of attraction such a force of attraction dimensions that have never been seen they will come and latch on to you father whatever is for me in this season by the grace you are putting on my life it must be attracted to me in this season lift your voice and pray like a believer you are placing an anointing you are placing a grace and a glory you are my glory the lifter up of my head you are my glory you are my glory you are my inheritance hallelujah hallelujah time will fail me to share with you the testimonies of the level of ease that your life will step into when you truly carry the glory of God the glory of God is a voice it can speak it can speak to kings that the things you once desired will come to you at a platter because his glory is upon you he says arise shine for your light has come not just that the glory of the lord is risen upon you the glory that excels this is the glory that will humble the arrogance of the kings of the earth if all you look for is money you will be like them if all you look for is human scientific wisdom you will be like them if all you look for is human systems of fortification but press for his face understand his ways and let him invest upon you a glory that excels and you will watch with wonder the way God will draw glory out of your life. 
there are new and strange kinds of anointings that are coming upon the body of Christ there are new and strange dimensions of the workings of the spirit as has never been seen the times and the seasons already signify it and our own is just to say maranatha come lord come with all of these things come come the body of christ is stepping into certain offices certain levels of spiritual possibilities that micah 4 prophecy of the church ascending we will humble the pride of kings the church is not a nuisance to civilization no god is giving us a voice that cannot be silenced a voice that not the rich will ignore the poor will not ignore politicians will not ignore but our price is to become the new wine skin that can carry that new wine and when the new wine finds a resting place then there is no limit to what you can do let me round up when the feast was about to finish and jesus turned water to wine the first to taste of that wine were the rulers of the ceremony listen carefully that wine was not designed for the general congregation the wine was a statement and so the attention of the kings they were the first to taste of the wine all other kinds of wines could be taken by everyone but the kings took it and they said where did you get this people bring the best at the beginning but you have saved the last that means the investment that god is giving us is to subdue the gatekeepers of territories not just for things common no the gatekeepers of territories access to the heart of nobles because one 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 madman in gadara listen one madman in gadara is equivalent to 10 cities we don't have the time again to go one by one to every city no god will be giving us the madman in gadara and the woman by the well god is will use one person like an arrow from a man's quiver and hit nations with it that's what god is doing listen to me and hear what i'm saying again prophetically it will no longer be one by one go to this there's no time for that again so he will give us a grace one grace that can touch a voice that will make all other voices hear him that's territorial dominion it no longer will be people one by one it's a waste of time he will be taking us to the madmen at gadara for the sake of the decapolis he will be taking us to the women at the well for the sake of all who will come with her all those who have the voice of systems god will send us to them that is why we need a glory that is higher than what they have otherwise they will not hear the word of the lord upon you it was nicodemus that came to jesus by night and said rabbi we know that thou art a man not i know not i know not i know meaning that we have been watching you and we have seen that even though we don't have this we know that thou art a man sent from god for no man can do these things the mountain of the lord's house it will look like a dream until you see it happening until you see that god gives you the heart of kings and then you plant the seed of righteousness that in one day a nation can be saved because their kings are saved was it not in one day nebuchadnezzar signed a decree 
and said everywhere across babylon let the god of shadrach meshach and abednego that anyone who does not worship that god should be killed there are spectacular things that god will do to men that will change men i'm available oh. i don't know about you but my heart is listen let me tell you the truth and i sincerely tell you this the concept of church as we know it is changing fast it will no longer just be a man of god and plenty people just no 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 it's going to be the level of access to territories that god will give you keys to territories men who will walk like gods upon the earth that you will speak and both your members and your non-members will be forced to hear because of what you hold this is what god is doing please i'd like you to be sensitive these seven days don't be casual we're, we're at the edge of the unfolding of a new move of god it's like a boiling pot that is already tilted and god is doing something very prophetic I will worship him and give a prayer to him alone. He who was and needs to come, I will sing before his throne. Someone giving him worship. You are able to do without us. And yet you act like you can. Mighty God, we bless you. We worship you, O God of heaven. The maker of the ends of the earth. Thank you for the privilege of worship. Thank you because you are God. There is none like you. Please let worship come from your heart, from the depth of your heart, even on to the king. Bless him in the spirit. Bless him in your understanding. Let your attention be on Jesus tonight. Ah, 
Just a few minutes of connecting deeply and truly with the God of the heavens. You are God that is truly known like you, from everlasting, even to everlasting. We declare that you remain God, majesty. Behold what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. For making us who we are, for making us what we are, thank you. For koinonia, for your grace, for your mercy, for your goodness. For the privilege of fellowship with the Spirit, for the privilege of fellowship with the brethren, for the privilege of fellowship with the world, we thank you. Hallelujah. Father, tonight, let your word come like rain. Upon a dusty ground. Please lift your voice and such the sweet atmosphere of the spirit in this place tonight. Let your word come like the rain. Until the spirit be poured up from on high. Then it says, the wilderness. Counted for a fruitful day. Then a fruitful ground for a forest. Hallelujah. Father, tonight we have come as proof that we love you. We have come tonight as proof that we want to learn, we want to grow, we want to rise to heights and dimensions unimagined. We have come tonight as proof that we are still interested in your dealings over our lives. We have come tonight as proof that we know the one who can change us, who can lift us, who can heal, who can deliver. We have come tonight as proof that we are grateful people, recipients of your mercy and grace. We have come tonight because we are hungry to receive the hallowed bread of the Spirit. We have come tonight because our hearts are thirsty. We have searched around and found out that you are the living bread and you are the water of life. Tonight, I pray in the name of Jesus. Let there be the hearing of faith. Let there be the working of miracles. May your word come, O oh God, like fire from heaven. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you. Please be seated, everyone. Hallelujah. It's my joy again to be around with us. Um, We are still going to pray tonight, and I trust that God will help us. First John chapter 2. First John chapter 2. I begin my reading from verse 12. Let me start um, to just encourage our hearts. First John chapter 2. Verse 12, I write to you, little children, because your sins are forgiven you for his name's sake. 13, 
I write unto you fathers because ye have known him that is from the beginning I write to you young men now listen because you have overcome the wicked one I write to you little children because you have known the father 14 I have written to you fathers because ye have known him that is from the beginning I have written to you young men because you are strong and the word of God abided in you and you have overcome the wicked one grant us understanding even by the spirit build our hearts O God in the name of Jesus Christ when scripture is talking to the young it talks about two advantages that they have number one is that they are strong number two is that the word of God abiding in them has given them the ability to overcome a personality that the Bible calls the wicked one please listen when he writes to the fathers he describes that your advantage is your knowledge there is something you have known about God from the beginning when he writes to the young men he says your advantage as young people is that you have strength and then that his word abides in you and on account of that abiding word that you have the power to overcome the wicked it is very important when the Bible is, is teaching us, it's important that we focus on the context of what it is saying. Knowledge for the fathers, strength and the grace to fight is the advantage of young people. Are we together now? First John chapter 5 verse 4. Apostle John is still teaching. And he's teaching the believer that the life of a believer is not only a life of victory but a life of warfare verse 4 for whatsoever not whosoever is born of God overcome it he's still talking of overcoming listen please young men strength and the grace to fight and he's saying whatsoever is born of God overcomes this system and this is the victory that overcomes there is victory that does not overcome there is victory that calls for celebration but here he's talking about a kind of victory that demonstrates that you are victorious by the experience of your overcoming this system and he says even our faith listen very carefully he didn't say this faith produces that victory he says the faith is the victory are we together now you have to understand this this is for many years I thought he's just talking of faith you will learn something powerful tonight that there is something called the faith that overcomes that if a believer possesses that the proof is that you will be able to rise above this system and the Bible calls that faith it does not say the faith produces victory uh -uh. that faith is victory itself are we together mm. Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 16 It starts by saying above all above every spiritual equipping you have been given now remember that in the book of Ephesians he's teaching the believer how to sit a revelation of your position in Christ then he teaches how to walk your walk of faith now he's teaching you how to stand against something he calls the wiles of the enemy and he's saying that above all that you can take a shield 
a shield. I did a little of that during the prayer and fasting. I don't know if it was this year or last year. A shield of faith. And then it says, wherewith, with that shield, you shall have an ability. You don't have that ability until that shield is there. That when the shield comes, you will be able to quench how many? All the fiery darts of the wicked. The same wicked one John is talking about. So we know that when it has to do with warfare, Satan is revealed as a wicked man. Wickedness, that the whole world lied in wickedness. That is the character. Please listen. And then the Bible says that you can hold the shield of faith. And that with that faith you can quench all, not some, the fiery darts. I write to you young men. Don't forget what we are dealing with because you are strong. I write to you young men because you have an ability to fight and overcome. Are we together now? First Corinthians chapter 16 and verse 9. We'll touch on four scriptures and then I'll begin to teach. Paul is teaching here and he's saying for a great door. He's teaching the church in Corinth. And an effectual is opened unto me. So he's talking about open doors. Are we together now? Dimensions, access. A great door, an effectual is opened unto me. He said, but there are many adversaries. A door of opportunity, a door of growth, a door of grace. But he's saying, he's teaching us something here. That the moment you see doors opening, don't celebrate, prepare to fight. That a great door is open unto me. But that the moment a door begins to be opened, he's teaching you that you should not be carried away by that door that is open. The moment you see doors opening, know that there are many adversaries. And so young men, get set when you see doors open, take up your shield of faith because there is the wicked one. Are you, are you getting what I'm teaching you now? Yes. That for every door that is opened and effectual, that means you can see the presence of the evil one to validate whether it was God that opened that door. And that you are prepared to fight with this shield of faith. Please understand, I teach you a deep mystery that you will need for your spiritual life. A great door and an effectual is open. But many are the adversaries. But the Bible says you can take hold the shield of faith and you will be able to quench the fiery darts. Now, listen. It matters that we understand how we grow in the kingdom. It matters, listen please, that we understand how we transit in the kingdom. It matters that we understand how victory is wrought for the saints. Because for many believers, we are aware of promises, but we have not been mentored into the dynamics of walking into the experience of the life, the power, the grace of the kingdom. And so while we are inspired by an expected end, many times we are ignorant of the things that happen between Egypt and Canaan. Are you getting what I'm saying now? So it is true that we fix our eyes on the end, but we are never really taught to understand the many things, the vicissitudes that we will face on the way. And lack of, listen, lack of that understanding can do many things to our experience, including not allowing us to arrive at the end. Spiritual maturity is not just the ability to be in church. In fact, it's not just the ability to read your Bible, to be equipped. Remember when he talks about fathers, their advantage is knowledge. You are fathers because you have an advantage of knowledge. So when he talks about fathers, he says you have knowledge. There is something that you know. When he talks about young men, 
He says, young men, you are about to know something. You do not yet know it. But in your fight, what you need now is the strength and the stamina to fight. So that when you become fathers, you will also be able to guide the young. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Fathers, you have this knowledge because you fought. And that experience taught you something about God that has become an advantage and a security for you. Young men, you are, your advantage is that you are emotion. There is strength. But there are many things you are going to know. And then he says, guard you with strength and stand in faith. Because a door is open towards you, but there are many adversaries. And you must understand the spiritual technology by which men fight until they grow to become fathers. Listen very carefully to what I'm about to teach you. It's a very powerful mystery. Many believers are not trained to understand the things of the spirit and how to navigate the enemy. Please hear me. This life is a combination of victories that appear when we fight a good fight of faith. Now, I believe in the grace message, don't get me wrong. I believe in all of these dimensions of the kingdom. But there is something about destiny that I want us to respect tonight. That destiny is a threat to Satan. The very, the very picture of destiny, your fulfilling your destiny is the assurance that Satan's doom is imminent. And so when Satan sees a man and a people with a destiny, they become the center of his interest. Now, many believers don't know this. We have all kinds of wise sayings. Don't trouble me. I don't trouble you. And all of that. And we have sometimes this false indoctrination that the only way... You give Satan, the only way Satan comes to you is when you look for his trouble. You are joking. Go and read your Bible well. The, there is something the moment you carry, that thing calls Satan till you leave the earth. Please understand what I'm teaching you. When there is prophecy upon your head, when there is grace upon your life, when there is a word upon your mouth, when there is an interest upon your life, Satan is interested in you. And let me tell you, there is one thing about Satan. He has an undying interest. He wants everything God wants. And if that thing is you, then listen to this message. Koinonia is quiet. <laughs> The proposition that many believers have, that you just know God, love God, worship God, engage principles here and there, you know, just speak the word here and there, and just cut walk into a glorious destiny is a joke. I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but it's a joke. If it is destiny in Christ, if it's a life of victory, then please understand what I tell you that there is faith that overcomes. Follow me as I teach. I have discovered that Satan's assignment, listen carefully, Satan's assignment is never to fight your faith. I used to think Satan was after our faith. I found out that's wrong. Satan is not after your faith. Satan is after the information upon which your faith was built. Now, please understand what I'm teaching you. Satan is not interested in your faith. Satan is interested in information, words. Because that is the basis upon which faith is built. Please understand this. <clears throat> There is no basis for faith until 
it is built on a word or the word as the case may be. Are we together? If I tell Pastor Alpha or Pastor Femi or Kenny or anybody, I say, come. I have called them. I have sent a word. They can place their faith upon it now. You see that? So what you really attack is not their obedience. What you attack is the information. If I tell Pastor Alpha, come, Pastor Femi, come, and they hear another voice that says, go. Now, that is an attack on information because in either ways, it is going to necessitate action. Please listen to what I'm teaching you. Many believers get to a point in their Christian experience where they have access to spiritual information that many times begins to corrupt the pace of their work with God. There are many believers who the challenge in their life is information dependent. Satan just comes in to plant another information. Please hear what I teach you. We're going to go to Genesis and you see what happened to Adam and Eve. I, I thought Satan was after faith, action. No, he's after information. Hezekiah heard just one information from a prophet and Hezekiah's whole life went down. If prophet Isaiah never reached Hezekiah, he probably would be able to, maybe he would have died still. But just that information, one information. The apostles of the Lamb were walking with Jesus and they had one information. I'm about to die. I'm going and I'm leaving you. And that changed everything. Jesus, where are you going? A dead body had one information and came back to life. Wine was finished. One information was introduced. And the next thing, water was turned to wine. Listen to me. This is a kingdom where we reign. And this is a kingdom where Satan operates. And this is also a kingdom where God operates by the power of spiritual information. In fact, information generally. Whether spiritual, whether intellectual, whether psychological. Our fight, therefore, in this kingdom is not necessarily a fight against spirits alone. It's not necessarily a fight against antichrist systems alone. The greatest warfare of a believer, listen to me, will be the warfare of words. The warfare of information. One information comes into your life or a series of information and it turns an ordinary student to become a doctor, to become an engineer, to become whatever it is, information. One information in a business seminar suddenly turns someone who has no hope of prospering. He receives that information and that information turns his life around. Have you been taught that in this kingdom, the maker and the breaker of men is information? There is what we call IT today. It's called information technology. Information is so powerful that technology was built around it. People have become multi-millionaires because they have mastered the art of disseminating information. They have created platforms around the world that connect people and supply information and they have prospered through it. Information is so powerful that when God is about to come and give Daniel an information, he doesn't just speak from heaven, he sends an angel with it to come. That's how much he places value on information. 
When Mary is about to receive Jesus, Jesus coming to her like that, she would not receive him. An angel had to come. Before the journey of Jesus started, she supplied an information. And Mary said, be it unto me. Genesis chapter 3. Now the serpent was more subtle than any of the beasts of the field which the Lord has made. Verse 2. And he said, notice now, we call this the fall of man theologically speaking of, you know, Adam and Eve now falling from that height and being banished out of the Eden of God. And remember, the entire story started with words. Satan comes to the woman, to the serpent, and says, what did God say? Please go back to verse 1. I want to find out. All I am after is what information are you standing upon? Because the information is creating an effect in this garden. And that effect is creating is not giving me allowance. So for me to thwart the purposes of God, I want to find out. So I'm on a research. What did God tell you? And the woman said, well, verse 2. God said we may eat. So God gave us access to the fruit of the trees of the garden. Verse 3. But of the fruit, aha, uh -huh, Satan's attention is coming now. He says, this and that and that you shall not eat, neither shall you touch it. And then he said, what is the consequence? That if you touch it, you shall die. So an information tied to life and an information tied to death. Are you getting what I'm saying now? And then Satan does not say, man, leave the garden. Satan does not say, man, I command you to die. In fact, Satan does not say, man, stop having faith. He says, man, give me your attention. Next verse. The serpent said, ye shall not die. Do you know what he's doing? He did not touch their faith. He's redirecting where the faith is based upon now. They still need faith to believe this. Are you getting what I'm saying now? And the only thing he came was to withdraw nicely the information upon which their victory in the garden was predicated upon. And he shifted it and supplied another information. And they absorbed that information. Verse 5. It says, for God knows. For God knows. I write to you fathers, any father including God, that the advantage in fatherhood is knowledge. For God knows that the day you eat thereof, your eyes will be opened. And then you shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Verse 6. Now, he said, when the woman saw, notice what the information started doing. The information was like a drug. We are not aware that he touched her. He just supplied an information. The first thing the information changed was perception. The eyes. The eyes started coming under the influence of that information. And then number two, an appetite started coming out that was not there. Now, look at how words are powerful. You will now know why God is called the word of God. The compendium of the thoughts of God. This is how Satan sent man out of Eden. Is it not amazing that he never used a sword? My brothers and my sisters, the greatest battles are not fought with knives. The greatest battles are not fought with blood and arrows and guns. The greatest battles is the energizings that information does to people. And the Bible says here that when she saw that it was pleasant and good for food, the Bible says she partook of it. Ate. That information compelled action. He never touched her, but he made something that had entered her spirit and her mind to compel action. And then the Bible says that she gave unto her husband who was there and he did eat. Next verse. 
and the eyes of them both were open and they knew that they were naked and they sued fig trees the long and short is he banished them out of the garden this is the first official record in the bible of man becoming a victim of satan this is the first official record of the warfare between man and satan and satan won so it means that we have to go back and study what weapon he used and he used the weapon of words weapons of information are we together now yes there is another way of doing ministry that can produce great results that information comes i can put something in your pocket and suddenly the power of god will multiply you were moving in innocence but an information came i will tell you something about informations i just needed to know that the real warfare of a believer is a battle of information satan wants your mind because your your destiny is not just god dependent it's also dependent on the information that runs you your faith cannot be based on nothing and whatever something it is that is the pillar of your confidence of your results that's what satan wants please listen to me the information upon which your faith is built that is his concern satan is not interested in your faith as it were he's interested because faith is simply conviction on an information and the corresponding action you take to demonstrate that you are convicted that's it so if i tell tosin i say tosin go and collect that handkerchief from this gentleman now faith can come because i have released the word is that true yes that word will stop him from doing what he was doing before and compel him now to act so when you see him move you call it faith but faith would never have been there except that an information came now assuming he's on his way going and i now stop him and give him another word i said don't worry go back what did i do i turned his whole life around using information listen to what i teach you there is power in this will you open up the gate open up the door will you open up the gate for the gates of life to be open. Will you open up the gate? Open up the door. I want to show you why information is power, both in the realm of the spirit and in this realm. I want to show you why words are so powerful. God protects it with his name and calls himself the word of God. God does not call himself um, the hand of God as it were. He names himself after information. If God names himself after information, that information created the heavens and the earth. Something was said and suddenly made bones that were hiding to come out something was said that made bones that were dead to come back to life something was said that made fishermen to not be interested in fishing again i can stop whatever you are doing now not by fighting you i only need to introduce something to you i can move your life by information 
I can stop your life by information. I can help you to be anointed by information. And I can destroy you by information. No wonder the founders of some of the great conglomerates around the world today, their product, the advantage is the vast access they have to information. Google, Facebook, they are a threat today to national security. And the simple advantage is because they develop a psychological platform that compel the world to grant them access to information to the point that the US government has to call them. There are several cult groups today and everything that is discussed in those cult groups are privy information. Are we together now? Let me share with you the technology of words. I want to show you, that's not the topic for tonight. I want to show you why words are powerful. I want to show you why information is powerful. So that you will understand that every time a word goes before you, it's not just a time to jump. It's a time to begin to prepare. Because Satan is coming after that information. This charge I give unto you, my son Timothy, that you wore a good warfare. I've sent you with an information. I've done my best. Timothy, hold that information and fight until you win. Let me tell you why words are powerful. Second Kings. I mean, not Second Kings. Ezekiel chapter 2. I sense a strong anointing in this place. Look up, please. And he said unto me, Son of man, stand up on thy feet, and I will speak unto you. Verse 2. And the Spirit entered me. Wow. When he spake unto me, and that Spirit, the Word, just stop at my ear and the spirit continued the spirit started making my body to start acting in consonance with what was said now listen please that he wanted me to move from where I was to another place and he simply sent a word and when that word got to the gate of my ears it was not it, it had finished his work like a train Every other thing that entered me was no longer sound, it was spirit. And that when it entered me, like a drug reacting to a patient, have you swallowed a drug before? And then you stand and the contraindications begin to work on you. You start to feel drowsy and you are wondering. Remember, you didn't ask the drug whether you wanted to be drowsy or not. It entered you and started reconfiguring you. I know your action by what you have received. I look at your destiny and I can, I can trace your victory or your problem to the presence of information. What did God tell you? Your victory cannot be automatic. So, if what did God tell you in your conversation with him? Because in Genesis, when you read Genesis chapter 2, it says, now the Lord came. The Hebrew word is the talking spirit. The spirit that speaks. The spirit that lives by speaking. The spirit that changes a man's life by speaking. Now listen. So for every word that is spoken, there is a spirit. The word spirit there does not just mean the Holy Spirit. It means there is an energizing. Words and information carry energy. They create a climate that compel action. This is where religion and science both agree. That words are powerful. They are shapers of perception. They are initiators of action words I write to you young men because you are strong and the word of God abides in you your strength is based on something you have heard and your victory is predicated upon a, a spiritual information supply
there is a medical condition called brain damage there is also another medical condition called loss of memory it happens a lot with old people it's a state where because of whatever biological challenges you no longer have the retention power you can forget your wife your husband and medical people agree that is a dangerous state for a man to be in there are people watch this who all of a sudden especially the elderly after 60 70 years of living on earth it could even be a pilot it could even be a professor just two months something affects the bank of information and the man can no longer walk his bones were not affected the information was withdrawn and he stands up and can no longer move and you ask him and say what is your name sir and he talks like a toddler the absence of information turn a man to a baby the technology of words words carry presence information carries energy whether they are spiritual information whether they are psychological information whether they are they are um, intellectual information that every time your the gate of your ears and your eye is open to information there is more that happens to you than awareness and enlightenment ladies and gentlemen now I want you to pay attention because I'm showing you a secret that is destroying our generation I show you the reason why men never stay until they win I show you a reason why very few people are victorious in this life do you know why because one of the worst things that happened to us on earth is a system that allowed information to go uncoordinated is one of the worst discoveries it is an advantage but what a, it was a galore for Satan when that happened there are still a few nations today now I'm not I'm not I'm not speaking political but there are a few nations today that still have some level from an earth realm from some level of sanity a bit and the reason why those nations have is the dictators the leaders there worked with the government to stop information dissemination is that true when you study um, stories of men like Adolf Hitler who led the campaign wanting to make Germany to speak about dominance there were chants and cliches that they continue to put it was on radio it was everywhere and all they were doing is indoctrinating the average German to believe he was superior and it worked he built an army not by recruiting men information terrorist groups today continue to recruit people not necessarily by force they propose information that can make a young man who is on his way becoming a doctor to suddenly turn and say I want to become part of a group and will be willing to die for it Whoever told you information is cheap whoever told you information is simple where God names himself the Word of God the information of God so every time words come to you here's the technology when a word is spoken or you come in contact with words or information the first thing that happens to you is your imagination is activated imaginations cannot be activated until there are words this is why words are dangerous words are the only instruments that have the power to activate imagery from where we get imaginations everybody look up imagine a yellow orange yellow orange big yellow orange now imagine that someone is cutting that orange with a knife 
Are you seeing how whether you like it or not, you are thinking what I'm saying. You are not just hearing it. I'm forcing your mind to move a direction by using the power of information. Now imagine a mother carrying a little baby. Imagine the baby trying to cry. Are, are you seeing how helpless your mind is? Provided the only way you can stop that imagination is to stop the information from reaching you. But once it is there, it has an ability that not even you can control again. Once it enters, it's like a drug. It starts to become an artist. It paints images about God, about life, about Satan. A little baby never believed that life can be hard till an information came. He heard the father or the mother say, Kai, this life self, this life self, and an image began to be created. And that image, listen, it is dangerous because the moment an image is built, your emotions are connected to the image. The moment your emotions are connected to images, creation begins immediately. This is how things manifest. Please, I want you to listen. You will thank me for what you are learning today. When the Bible says, guard your heart with all diligence, it knows what it's saying. That means control the information that enters into your spirit man because out of it, that information is not just words. That information is not just speakings. That information is a potential for creation that can make or mar you. What Elijah is playing now is not just music. What he's playing now, they are words. They are spiritual information operating at different frequencies and because your tripartite nature was designed to understand this your ears may not know what he's saying but your spirit man knows that is the reason why they can use music to calm people down that is why when music was played a demon left Saul the demon had something that Saul did not hear the ear of Saul was not necessary. Just allow the string enter. When it gets to the realm of the spirit, it will change back to words and the spirit will know what is being said. Listen to me. Nations today have gone to war simply because of information. Whole territories have been annihilated because of information. There are people today in hellfire because of information. Who has believed our reports? To that man, the arm of the Lord has been made revealed. Words carry spirits. Words carry energy. And this is not some science nonsense. I am telling you. You literally can program your climate in less than a minute by the entrance. He said the entrance of your word give it light and understanding. That means show a confused man scattered in destiny. Just introduce the word of God to that person. And that's it. Your life will begin to reflect the information that you have. I'm saying this because, listen to me. Our generation is very careless over our minds. Our generation is very careless over the power of words. In ministry, in life, people don't seem to have regard for words. Words are powerful. Words produce effects. Words can make. Words can destroy. Words can heal. Words can cause pain. Words are powerful. And if you understand this, words create imaginations and they connect us to those imaginations. When Satan wants a cause to remain in your family, he does not say cause remain. He uses words, the word of a priest, the word of an elder, 
words that have come from father to grandfather. Now, you believe those words, and when you believe those words, they create images. You are emotionally connected to those images, and you are loyal to what you believe. That is the strength of the altar. The altar sits on your emotional connection to those words. The day you stop believing those words, you are ready for the power of God to smash that thing. That's why when the Holy Ghost comes, he now tells you, are you not aware that there is another information? Esther, listen, her man came and requested the king to approve an information. And an information was stamped already and the death sentence of the people were waiting. They were going about every day. They did not know that they had finished killing them by information. Even when her man died, they were still in trouble because the real enemy was not her man. The real enemy was the information. Esther knew that the death of her man had not yet solved that problem. Information. And so Esther went to the king and said, do you know what? You have to write another information that can give an upper hand to preserve my people. It was at that Esther chapter 6 that the story ends with honor and glory. Information. Words. That's what they call a pre fool. Many of you do it. People have collapsed because of a pre fool. Others have died and no opportunity to tell them I'm joking again. Now watch this. You go to an ATM to withdraw money. Remember the ATM does not speak English. You are just using your eyes. Withdraw for me 5,000 and the ATM says cash unavailable. Immediately that report depresses you, you stand there. A machine did not flog you. A machine did not speak your language. It only created an energy. Remember, you are smiling. The joy of the Lord is my strength, bouncing to the ATM. And suddenly, because you punch and it said cash unavailable, you start thinking, this is how my life is. It did not ask you to think that way. While you are laughing, take seriously what I'm saying. Satan waits until the information has been connected to your imagery. Then he comes. He will create a system around it. Sit upon it and your doom becomes almost imminent. This is the victory that overcomes. What victory? The labor in the spirit to protect the information. It is real warfare and it produces real victory. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? There are, there are many of us here that are parents. Why do we prefer, now please, I, I, this is respectful with all my heart, but why will a parent prefer to carry a child to a mission school than an ordinary public school? It may not necessarily just be the standard. The parent wants to keep the child within a sociological sphere that regulates the quality of the information that is in the mind of the child. And to do that because it's not cheap, you will pay for it. That's the reason why a school where there can be people, there's no gate in and out. Anybody can lean on this class and suggest you can pay next to nothing. But there are people who pay millions per term on a child. And you are wondering, it is not only the knowledge they are paying for, they are paying for the atmosphere. Are we together now? When you go to Transcorp, or you go to any of these modern day hotels, you buy a cup of coffee and you can pay 5,000. Stroll 30 meters, 10 meters from that place, you will get the same coffee, hello, the same hot water, the same everything for less than 500 naira. So what did you really pay for? Because your access to that place can give you an information. You can be seated in a lounge when two millionaire businessmen are discussing and you will hear something that can be an advantage. You can be there when politicians are talking. So you are not only paying for tea, you are paying for the energy that you are receiving there. Why does Satan fight your coming to Koinonia? Did you hear the wonderful testimony of that, my dear brother? Why does Satan fight tooth and nail? 
he knows that it is not only the speakings of a man that more than what you are hearing there is a spirit please hear what i'm saying somebody testified that he got an alert what did the alert do to him notice he had not verified whether the alert would be reversed as soon as he saw it he just started becoming glad watch this a student stands in front of the board he's coming with his friend to check his result glory be to god i'm happy we'll all be graduates and he stands in front of the board and in two minutes he sees an information three carryovers and that person is there and for the next one week he cannot become himself again because an information came imagine that while he's standing there somebody just comes and says sorry it's a mistake it was not your number watch this. immediately he will change back now watch this look at how you are moving at the frequency of information like people who check admission list and don't see their names and they go back depressed and then they see a text congratulations say for what say you got admission say no you are checking your first name check your son name and you quickly check and that's your name immediately you start to dance the information did not tell you to dance it created an energy that supplied action Are you getting what I'm saying now? That means if words create imaginations that connect us emotionally to it, then we must guard the words and the information that comes to us. Another thing with words is that they compel us to think and act in honor of the persuasions obtained. To think and act. In honor of the persuasions you receive an information that your loved one has gone to be with the Lord that information does something to you that's why you cry that information does something to you that's why you are gloomy and agitated that information does something to you the same way you receive an information somebody just blessed you with a house that information does something to you now listen to me listen to me when you become a master at creating your own spiritual, emotional, and sociological climate, you have become a master indeed. Do you know why I'm saying that? Because for every open door you read, there are many adversaries. And guess how the adversaries act? They operate through words through words you will be promoted to a company as soon as you get there you'll be happy until you hear that there is tribalism in this company the moment you hear it it begins to affect you a believer has the responsibility please hear me in honor of your destiny in honor of the purposes of God you have a responsibility under God to set a guard not just over your mouth but over your mind to control the information unfortunately our world today is full of all kinds of information people have entered divination not knowing because in a bid to search for truth they stumble across Greek and Hebrew words who went to Latin words who went to ancient words who went to magical chants and before you know it they found themselves in all kinds of things I learned this about my life and I learned this from uncommon mentors and when I learned this it I made it a personal responsibility that my life I was going to guard with jealousy because the information that you are connected to ignites creation and sooner or later you will begin to see those information notice I am a doctor this is a patient he's feeling a little bit of pain in his side and then he comes to me and I run a test and I tell him sir you have cancer and based on this cancer I'm not saying doctors are wrong it is at stage four and usually 
statistics we built a statistics around this information that at this stage of cancer you have between six months to one year to live any other encouragement you give that man is a waste of time the information has entered let me tell you what will begin to happen my child is only nine years what am I going to do with my nine-year-old child and then the spirit of fear rides upon that information and comes I hope you know that there are cases that don't reach nine months fear is coming the next thing the spirit of suicide comes what good is living while all of this is happening watch this those possibilities will now be making all of these foundational things look strong and powerful as though they veto you and walk they depend on your partnership your reception of words now watch this he said young men the word of God abides in you that means when that kind of report comes there should be if you are a believer there should be war within your spirit if there is no war it's a sign that you are not holding the shield of faith and you are not an overcomer because it is expected that it should enter and meet another information and listen when the word went to hell there was war in hell are we together now Satan mimicking attempting to be the light bearer the word and then the word himself the logos of God there was war in hell and he triumphed over them and came out as the firstborn of the gotten the war happened in the realm of the spirit but the result was seen in the physical realm the war always happens in the realm of the spirit the death happens in the realm of the spirit the defeat happens in the realm of the spirit and all we see is the physical manifestation Satan and Jesus did not come to the earth and then they came out and said wow now we no 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 the battle was won there the keys were collected and he came out victorious and said all hail all power immediately he resurrected he spoke straight up there is something you need disciples come together in three days you had something that changed your mind little children come feed my lamb tarry in Jerusalem the Holy Ghost is coming information that's what he left them with when the angels came they said why look up you know to the sky this same Jesus you have seen he will return that became the basis of salvation the death the burial the resurrection of Christ Paul created a theology out of that information that is where we stand today he calls it the power of God unto salvation please listen to what I tell you our children watch cartoons and people get initiated why because of information notice that when these children hear they start chanting what they are saying even if it's part of what they are saying whether or not they understand it and they become emotionally connected to it and it begins to affect them I write to you young men because you are strong fathers you know this you are equipped in knowledge but I write to you young men because you are strong I write to you young men because the Word of God is abiding in you and because of that abiding word Satan is going to come and when he comes fight what fight the fight of allowing the Word of God gain superiority he said let God be true and let every man be a liar this is the warfare of the believer I got a report from home in the name of Jesus let the word of God well up within me I decree and declare there is no death in my family there is no going down there is only rising up the hand of God is upon me you are fighting the warfare you are using that faith that the Bible calls is the victory I give you a guarantee there is one thing Satan does not have an indefinite power to survive it is the keeper of Israel that does not sleep nor slumber Satan can be weary 
but there are many weak believers. We sit down and allow the devil shred our lives into pieces. We sit down and allow the devil to take advantage. Do you know there are people right now who are like, if you can imagine in the realm of the spirit, imagine chains that are a result of several presents that came because of words. You will fail. You will die. Your life will not rise. You are good for nothing. And you sit down and it leads to depression. The birth of anything valuable is painful. It will require you knowing how to fight Satan. I'm saying this because this thing is killing people all over the earth. Internet. People go online and type something. Go online and just put something. Bam! And they hear an information that depresses their life forever. Oh, the job you did with that class, there is a statistics like this, that out of the so-so so million of graduates, only three in 10 years. See, let me tell you the truth. And I submit to you, many information on this earth are useless. As far as your life is concerned, as far as your victory is concerned, you have an assignment to lean and help the spirit of truth to guide you into the truth that are necessary for your life. If you expose yourself to just any and every kind of information, you will lose the anointing, you will lose relevance, you will lose power. Your strength is in your protecting that information. You must guard yourself. Is God speaking to us? This gentleman sings. I can tell him one word. Your song is beautiful. It will take you around the earth. He can carry that information and be working with it until he meets a manager. And the manager looks at him and says, what tribe are you? You are not this tribe. Mr. Man, I don't want to lie to you. I'm sorry. Another information creates presence. Listen, we are going to pray tonight. And many of you do not know that you are in the, you are in the midst of different demonic energies that have come from words. And because you are connected to these various things, they make good things look evil. It is this energy that will make good people look like devils. Even if somebody looks at you and says, nice hair, you say, nice hair for what? You are reacting to an energy. There are information that has come to you that nothing good will come out of your life. So it corrupts your perception. When God says, I want to lift you, like Mephibosheth, you say, am I a dog? God, go and lift others. Tonight we have come to tear these things. It's why people don't prosper. Let me tell you, it doesn't matter what kind of business you do. The real business is the business of information. It's the reason why no great businessman will teach anything valuable everywhere. They will call you and culture you and make sure you are ready to receive what they are telling you. There was something Peter, James, and John saw and knew that the rest did not know. That was why they became the pillars. There are things God has shown me in my life about himself. There are things God has revealed to me. They become the objects of my protection because they are the pillars of my success. And if anything happens to them, then it will shred my life into pieces and I will continue to labor to protect them. Let me tell you this, your atmosphere is waiting for you to stand in faith and tear down that atmosphere. Otherwise, I don't care what kind of deliverance you do, you will get up and fall down. Your life will never change that atmosphere. I can stand in front of this guy and pick the signals of depression. I can stand in, not word of knowledge, I can pick the signals of discouragement. Why? Because I am also a spirit being and this guy has been programmed by an atmosphere. Let me tell you this. Human beings are simply walking atmospheres, carrying their possibilities around. And you have an assignment under God 
to fight this warfare of preserving your atmosphere, the insistence. It's called the faith that brings victory. You must be careful what you say to yourself. You must be careful what you say to others. You must be careful what you hear from yourself. You must be careful what you hear about others. It is not the information, it is the effect on your life, on your destiny. It is the effect. Um, a few days ago, I, I was watching an interview between some of the billionaires in the world, and I was shocked at the, they are so cultured. Words are expensive to them. You see the way they speak. And then I was watching CNN. I don't know when was it. I was just watching a, 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 an impeachment probe that, that is going on and so on and so on. And I mean, you, you could see the way those guys were meticulously words. Just one word, not said correctly, can be the... And I said, ah, God, grant me the grace to master words. If my destiny is word dependent, then do something to my life. This is more than the ability to speak English. This is the ability to make sure that your communications are cultured, seasoned with salt. Number two, to ensure that you have an atmosphere that is a shield. That faith, immune by the word of God. When death comes, it finds an information. When discouragement comes, it finds an information. You are enveloped in it. Just like that. The shield. Please hear me. The days that are coming will require this understanding. The days that are coming, you will need to be the prophet of your own destiny. The days that are coming, you will need to set a guard over your mind. Your prosperity depends on it. Your lifting depends on it. Those of us in ministry, listen twice. Let me tell you, the days that are coming, you must master the art of ensuring that your spiritual climate, that your intellectual climate, that your emotional climate is seasoned with the word of God. It's an assignment you must do because a lot depends on it. Let me show you one scripture and then we'll find a place to pray. Second Kings chapter 7. Please pray in the spirit in one minute. Second Kings chapter 7. Second Kings chapter 7. Second Kings chapter 7. Hallelujah. Please look up. Watch this. Then Elisha said, this is the prophet, hear ye the word. He, he wants to change farming now. I want to show you the technology. Until now, Samaria is under siege to the point that women are eating their children. Do you think those women started eating their children like that? Somebody must have said something that made women to see their children as food because children are not food. Tomorrow about this time, information, everybody say words. Shall a measure of flying flour be, be sold for a shekel and two measures of barley for a shekel in the gate of Samaria? Next verse, verse 2. And then this other Lord said a lot of things. Simply because he did not fight the prophet. He fought the information that came from God. And there was a consequence. He said, behold, thou shalt see it with your eyes, but thou shalt not eat thereof. Next verse. Now, watch how God brings his word to pass. Look up, please. We're about to pray. There were four leprous men at the entering in of the gate. And they said... The spirit of prophecy made them to start saying to one another, Are you seeing how this thing works? 
they were not talking to themselves before but an anointing came as soon as that anointing came information started coming why they said to one another why sit we here till we die was that the first time they were sitting there they had been there but see every word is sponsored by spirits listen to what I tell you when they were prophesying I hope you know these four lepers did not hear it they did not hear the prophecy but the spirit that went with that prophecy started searching for men and they were sitting they didn't even know a spirit had come upon them the next thing the urge to talk and they said why should we sit here and die and as soon as they started contemplating go back go to verse 4 if we say we will enter the city then famine is in this city and we shall die there and if we sit here we will die also please talk to me what has this got to do with four lepers sitting down it is not about leprosy it is creation about to happen but creation cannot happen until spiritual information come even for lepers even if you cannot walk you can hear It says now therefore come they are talking to one another let us fall onto the host of the Syrians if we save us alive we shall die if they kill us we shall but die look at this these are people sitting at the gate running away from hunger and in minutes courage comes upon them and they make up their mind let's just go and give ourselves to our enemy if we die information now watch this verse 5 and they rose up what time at twilight to go to the camp of the Syrians and when they were come to the uttermost part of the camp of Syria behold there was no man there what happened next verse hallelujah Mako Sibra Katushiata for the Lord made the host of the Syrians to hear a noise he did something to their perception they got an information I'm showing you how they ran away they got an information and then even a great noise and they said the same way the leper said to one another this guy said to one another no the king of Israel had hired against us are you seeing what perception does it gives you ideas that are not there they, there was no business the kings themselves were afraid but here is an information making a weak man look strong the king had hired against us the kings of the Hittites the Egyptians and so on and so forth to come upon us wherefore they arose and fled also in the twilight and left their tents their horses their asses even the camp as it was and fled for their life eight and when these lepers came to the uttermost part of the camp they went into one tent and did eat and drink and they carried silver gold raiment and went and hid it and came again and entered into another tent and carried all of this verse 9 to tell you it was the spirit of God they now said the same spirit now made them to pass another information it would have stopped at them stealing to run away but the goal would not be achieved the goal was the salvation of Samaria not the healing of four lepers so the spirit now came and still made them to say to one another again we do not well same spirit can you imagine that one moment they are stealing and running away and happy next moment they are convicted and say we do not do well this is the day of good tidings and we hold our peace if we tarry till morning what if some mischief come upon us now therefore come let us go to the king's house and tell him this good report that king we came and found food here four lepers were used to save a nation through the power of words i'm showing you the technology if one of those lepers just one said i'm not going the rest would have been discouraged it was the spirit of god that made all of them to unanimously agree
man of God let me show you where the next level of your ministry is it's not just in a man it is in an information there is something you can hear there is something you have heard there is something you are hearing that is shaping your life literally we are products of the information that we have heard there is something koinonia has heard that has been the building block upon which the faith of god rests there is something our families have heard that has authorized darkness to defeat us tonight in prayer is a warfare of words to stand to say lord a generation depends on the quality of not only my spiritual enlightenment but the warfare my children are depending on the quality listen let me tell you this the bible says i think it's mark 4 or so did i write it here mark chapter 4 and verse 24 let me show you god's standard it says take heed what ye hear with what measure ye meet it shall be measured to you that means hearing is also sowing when you hear it's like a farmer putting seeds and he said that if you hear you are drawing more of that that means you keep attracting more things to your life are you seeing why more tragedies continue to come to people because their minds continue to create the climate for it this is where it comes from it shall be measured to you and unto you that here shall more be given more of what you hear more of what you hear if you hear the word of God you hear things that build you more of it will come you hear about the anointing it will bring the anointing more of it will come you hear about that's why we must be careful now I minister deliverance and all of that but I have a little problem with talking about Satan and talking about demons every day and forever it is dangerous because more than the information you are trying to pass you are shaping the minds of the people to the point that they will never ever see victory again when Isaiah the year that King Uzziah died Isaiah told us what he saw he said I saw the Lord I saw the Lord son of man what seest thou you must choose what you hear Parus Kadia you must choose what you see words is a battle of destiny please understand what i'm telling you it's a battle of destiny words are like drugs the only thing is that they don't enter through your mouth once they enter your spirit they can keep you poor they can keep you less anointed but when you embrace the engrafted word it is able to make you this is the place of encounter. This is the place of surrender. Do to me what you want. This is the place. Where my flesh gives way Do to me what you want This is the place Where my life is changed Do to me what you want The disciples went into hiding Because of something they heard As soon as Jesus resurrected He told Mary Magdalene he said run go and tell them this new information Jesus is alive he's risen the tomb is empty as soon as she went to tell them that information gave them energy listen you are dying today physically because of something that entered your ears something else must enter you tonight as the spirit something else I am able I am well able I am well able spies were sent ten of them came with something called an evil report 
the Bible did not call it an honest report. It called it an evil. It was their perception they brought. And the Bible says, I don't care if it's not the word of God. It's an evil report. And Joshua and Caleb said, let's go up at once. He said, we are well able. They were the only two that entered the promised land. Listen. Listen. You must make it a project to frustrate Satan in your life. You must make it a project to disallow. He is at the mercy of your understanding this truth. I write to you fathers because you have known. I write to you sons because although you do not know, you have strength. You can fight and experience can come out of your battle. That when you now become fathers, you can mentor other sons. I write to you fathers, young men, because the word abides in you. So when words come, it's a battle of words and you fight in the spirit to preserve those words. Listen, he said, you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost comes. But what they received made them to speak. On the day of Pentecost, fire came on their head, but the reaction was speaking. They began to speak. From that speaking, 3,000 were saved. From that speaking, the church began to advance. Parusa la katusi bregedibalabu. Kanisa landas kabarusi atash. Krete barudi asa. Please hear me. Your destiny is bigger than your today. Man of God, this level of ministry is only the starting point. And let me tell you this, if you can hold on to that victory, the Bible calls the fight to protect God's information, the victory that overcomes. The victory that overcomes. The victory that overcomes. The victory that overcomes. Overcomes. Lift your voice and begin to blast in the spirit. The victory that overcomes, the victory that overcomes in the name of Jesus, the victory that overcomes even our faith, the victory that overcomes even our faith, the victory that overcomes even our faith, the victory that overcomes. Pray, be a speaking spirit tonight. Pray, be a speaking spirit tonight. Be a speaking spirit tonight. Hallelujah. Prayer point number one. Hear me. Hear me. It was through the power of prayer, a physical climate change from a dry season to a rainy season. Any climate can change when we pray. Elijah prayed dry season to become rainy season. You are going to pray that every atmosphere and every climate that ministers death, that ministers discouragement, that in the name of Jesus, both the information and the atmosphere live my life. Speak to it. Speak to your childhood. Speak to your limitations. I come in the name of the Lord, the captain of the armies of heaven.
Corinthians 14 verse 10. Read with me. One to read. There are as it may be so many kinds of voices in the world and none of them is without signification. That means no voice at all is just a social voice. No voice at all is just a technology voice. No every voice is programming your destiny. Whether it is the voice of a mentor, the voice of the word of God, the voice of culture, the voice of your childhood, the voice of your family, you are going to pray. The Bible says bringing down every stronghold and every thought to the obedience of Christ. Lift your voice and tear down words and information. says while men slept the enemy came and sowed seeds and went his way but the Bible says every tree that has not been planted by my father in the realm of your spirit and in the realm of your mind you are going to uproot and tear down by faith lift your voice and declare I uproot Every speaking, I uproot. Every foundation, I uproot. Every perception, I uproot. 
communication that is not consistent with the character. Every communication that is not consistent with my goal, with my destiny, with my dominance, I come against it in the name of Jesus. Is someone praying tonight? Hallelujah. Please look up while still praying. It's a strong anointing here. The Bible says, resist the devil and he will flee. But we need to know how we resist the devil in this kingdom. Matthew chapter 4 verse 10. Please give it to us quickly. Matthew chapter 4 and verse 10. Resist the devil. Matthew, help us media. Matthew chapter 4 and verse 10. This is how Jesus rebuked and resisted the devil. Then said Jesus to him, Get thee then, Satan, for it is written. That is the basis. It is written. Not I think, not I wish, it is written. The victory that overcomes is a victory that is written. Written. The logos. Get thee then poverty, for it is written. Get thee then limitation, for it is written. Lift your voice and declare Satan away from my destiny, away from my life. It is written. Speak scripture. It is written.
Hallelujah. Prophet Joel. Prophet Joel taught us a very deep mystery. In chapter 3, please give it to us. We are praying. Chapter 3 and verse 10. Joel. Joel 3 and verse 10. Beat your plowshares into swords. In other words, it's time for the fight of faith. And your pruning forks into spares this is not just a time for harvest it's a time for warfare and then he says in that warfare let the weak say I am strong let the poor say I am rich let the redeemed of the Lord say so you are about to say so now this is strategy everything the Bible says you are Everything the word of God says you are, you are about to say it now. Lift your voice and begin to prophesy. I am strong. In the name of Jesus, I am blessed. If someone pray, I am anointed. My business is flourishing, pray. The ministry is flourishing by the spirit. My home is flourishing by the power of the Holy Ghost. My finances is flourishing by the spirit of the Christ. I go from glory to glory. I go from grace to grace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are going to pray. And listen to me. You are going to declare. The Lord spoke to us that this is our year of extraordinary fruitfulness. You are going to pray and prophesy. It must be as he said. It must be as he said. Over every area of my life. Lift your voice now and begin. It must be as he said.
Job chapter 5, verse 19. Job chapter 5, verse 19. We'll read 19 and 20. Job chapter 5. Job chapter 5. Are we there? He shall deliver thee in six troubles. Yea, in seven shall no evil touch you. Verse 20. In famine. This is the first kind of trouble that comes upon men in the earth. Famine. He shall redeem thee from death. In war. He shall redeem thee from the power of the sword. 21. Thou shalt be hid from the scourge of the tongue. Neither shalt thou be afraid of destruction when it cometh. At destruction and famine thou shalt laugh. Neither shalt thou be afraid of the beasts of the earth. For thou shalt be in league with the stones of the field. Listen, this is a mystery that one day God will grant me the grace to teach in this place. The word league is covenant. That you will be in, in a covenant with the stones of the field. And the beast of the field shall be at peace with you. Listen, he said in six troubles, yes, seven, he shall deliver you. You are about to pray these prayers. In famine, in war, the speakings and the tongues of men, Lord, arise by the Spirit. And let my life see your salvation. Let my life see your salvation. Lift your voice and pray. Are you praying? Arusha la Praise the Lord. Just two or three more prayer points and we are done for the night. Listen to me. You are going to cry to God and ask the Holy Spirit to be the administrator of your atmosphere. Listen. It's a powerful prayer. 
he is called the Lord of hosts. The Lord of hosts. The protector of your atmosphere. That your mind will always remain at the presence. Samuel had the voice of God because he was lying down close to the ark. You are going to pray, Spirit of the Lord. You were sent to guide me into all truth. Guide me into the truth formation that would build faith in me for the days that come. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Please lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice and pray. Because the wisdom of God. Spirit of the living God. Guide me to all truth. Take away the unnecessary for my life. Lead me to information. Lead me to scripture. Lead me to revelation. Lead me to understanding. That build my life. That build my destiny. Koinonia, is this your prayer? Is this your prayer tonight? Is this your prayer tonight? Guide me to all truth. Truth for my destiny. Truth for my finance. Truth for my life. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The Bible says, Declare ye that ye might test be justified. That means your bailout, your vindication in the realm of the spirit is predicated upon your declaring. Declaring what? What is written? Listen. The word of God that is allocated for every area of your life to produce victory. You are not going to spare. You will speak. Listen. Listen. I told you that words carry energy. They carry presence. They create imagery. They connect your emotions to those images. And then they make for creation. This is the technology of information. You are going to pray over anything in your life that must change in this season. That must change. You are going to enforce the word of God with power and grace. I'd like you to lift your, ma your voice. Mention the area that must change. Place a demand. Don't let the devil speak things to your ears. Is it your finances? Is it your family? Is it your spiritual life? Listen to me. You can create a new effect. You can create a new atmosphere. You can create a new image. You can win. The word of God abides in you. Open your mouth and declare. 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 The word of the Lord. In the glory and the power, I see miracles. 
signs and wonders in the glory and the power I see miracles I'm a sign and wonder to me he said son of man what seest thou hold on, hold on you are going to pray Lord change my perception about life my perception about God my perception about my circumstances my perception about Satan do a miracle to my sight lift your voice and pray do a miracle change my perception every image every emotional connection to every image that is birthing pain that is birthing impossibilities that is allowing darkness to reign over my life change my perception koinonia pray a miracle of the seen eyes Change my perception. The Bible says, For we know that all things work together for good to them who love God and who are the called according to His purpose. Lift your voice and pray. Change my perception. Change my financial perception. My spiritual perception. My career perception. My sociological perception. My emotional perception. Let my perceptions be lined up to and with the world. Let my perceptions be lined up to and with the world. Change my perception in the name of Jesus. Save my perception. My perception of ministry. My perception of life. My perception of my family. My perception of increase. My perception of your purpose. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's have the last prayer point for tonight. Listen. The victory of the believer is in staying and hearing and seeing the word of God. But we all with unveiled face beholding as in a mirror we are changed into the same image not another. You will become the reality of the information that enters your life. You will become weakness when you hear weakness. You will become weakness when you hear weakness. You will become strength when you hear strength. 
listen to me you will become powerful when you hear power you will become full of faith when you hear faith you will become a man of speed when you hear words of speed you will become revived when you hear words of revival you will become a man of fire when you hear words of fire listen your thinking makes your belief system and it translates into who you are you have an assignment to from today and forever protect yourself protect yourself protect yourself from the influence the arsenals of culture the arsenals of satan the arsenals of past your past the arsenals of your weakness career whatever it is make up your mind that you sustain the stamina to stay on that which is written for the bible says listen to me that heaven and earth will pass away but this word abides forever the bible says he upholds all things not by ideas by the word of his power so no matter what you are going through in your life you are not defeated if what is written is still in your mouth joshua chapter 1 and verse 8 i'm rounding up this book of the law shall not depart from out of thy mouth but thou shalt meditate therein day and night consistently that thou mayest observe to do all that is written therein then and only then shalt thou make your way prosperous and thou shalt have good success last prayer lord jesus magnify your word and the voice of the holy spirit above every other voice and influence in my life lift your voice and pray magnify magnify if someone pray magnify your word above my circumstances magnify your word above my limitations magnify your word above ministry magnify your word if someone pray lord i want to see your word exalted be lifted high, be lifted high, oh Lord, be lifted high, for you are holy, righteous and holy. class of degree you finish with.
lifted above every worry that plagues you down. Oh Lord, believe it is within the power of God to lift a man. It is within the power of God to take weak men and set them as kings and princes. It is within the power of God to prosper a man. Please listen to what I tell you. It is within the power of God to keep a man. It is within the power of God to bring deliverance and to bring salvation. It is within the power of God to give you a new name that the mouth of the Lord himself will call. Lifted. Exalted. That when you stand through life, anything that is not the word of God, you have an assignment to fight that fight. It's not a weak fight. It's a great fight. Until that which is written becomes your experience. Until everything that you see is Jesus. Until everything that you see is his grace, his life, his power, his wisdom. Until everything you see is that what you saw in your dreams and your vision now becomes your experience. You continue to set your gaze on Jesus until you see that anointed version of you that you saw in your dream. No matter what you see in your life, don't let men clap you to your grave. If it has not become what you saw, keep pressing. Lord, I thank you, but I keep seeing. We are able to go out and take the country. To possess the land from Jordan to the sea. Though the giants may be on our way to hinder, God will surely give us victory. We are the generation that is well able. Regardless of your background, you are well able. It may not look like it until the word of God gains ascendance. Your assignment is to believe his report and to stay there. Apostle, but you do not understand. I didn't get admission. Apostle, as I am right now, I don't even know where the next meal will come from. Apostle, I've prayed and fasted for the anointing, for things to move in my life. It doesn't matter what it is. My brothers hear me. My sisters hear me. You are only victorious when you stand on God's side. Stand. Continue to exalt his word. Lift it above. Once he stands above, you will see what that word will do. It will become not only an anchor, it will become a cover. It will become the basis for your victory. Hear me? Even the hand of God wrote twice. That means whatever was written can be rewritten. Did you hear what I said? The hand of God wrote once and wrote again for Moses. Isaiah, go back to Hezekiah. Tell him I have changed my mind. Hezekiah, there is no death for you again. Please pay the price to know God. Pay the price to know God. Hezekiah, you will continue to be king. I have shifted the song to prove to you that I have rewritten. Esther meets the king and says, write again, O king. It was her man that deceived you to write. You wrote death. It is within your power to write life again. And the king said, bring me the paper. And he wrote and stamped it. Hear me? No matter what has been written over your life, I stand by the word of God. Listen to me. In this kingdom, please hear me. There is a heavy anointing on me. I want to pray for you. Listen. It says, my heart is indicting a good matter. Yea, I speak of excellent things. It says, my tongue is the pen of a ready writer. I want to write something in your life by the Spirit. It is true 
that what was written can be rewritten. Mm. Please, you don't have to kneel. You don't have to kneel. Please stand. It is true that the ordinances and the appointments of death, the appointments of failure, it is true that the expectations of wicked people waiting, believing that your family will not amount to anything, that your life will go down. Tonight I stand by the Spirit, indicting a good matter. He said, yeah, I speak of excellent things. And he says, my tongue is a pen of a ready writer. I stand by the God of heaven who calls men by his grace. I declare whatever was written that is an appointment unto death, I change it and I speak life to you now. Hear me, if Esther did not come to Mordecai, it was not only, if Esther did not come to the king, it was not only her man. Hear me, look at me, let me teach you a mystery. If her man died and Israel died, God lost. The verdict that was in the presence of the king was not just for her man, it was also for Israel. And Esther came and said, King, write again. The verdict that plagues families and plagues individuals, hear me, it is not only for your grandfather alone, it affects everybody. It is not only for Nigerians alone, but we are standing like midwives, like Esther, to say, King, write again. In the name of Jesus, every appointment unto derision, unto death, unto causes, unto woes, I stand as one who stands by the election of grace, and I declare that ordinance is changed over your life. Please help them. That ordinance is changed over your life. Hear me. It was unfortunate for Herod. Herod spoke against Peter. And he was speaking against the gospel. But there were saints who were praying. There was nobody to advocate for Herod. Herod fell from his throne, died immediately, and worms came out of his body. They are taken for a prey, and none said, restore. Listen, restoration is advocated for through the power of prophecy. I decree that anything that has become a programming over your life and destiny to sabotage the purposes of God over your life. I stand by the power of words and in the name of Jesus, we create a new outcome for you. teaching one of God's generals and someone stood in the congregation and while she was teaching he laughed at her and she looked at him and said God judge you his tongue protruded immediately there was no hospital he went to that they could find a cure eventually they brought him to Maria Woodward Eater and explained what happened. And she nodded and slapped the tongue and it deflated and went down immediately.
let me tell you this there are families there are territories that are carrying ancient words that came from the anger of men spoken over people spoken over families when Jericho was destroyed a curse was placed on it that whoever builds Jericho he will build the foundation with the blood of his firstborn and he will complete it with the blood of his lastborn an innocent king came many years later on and thought it was just over and just carelessly went to build the foundation and his firstborn went for it and as he tried to complete it his lastborn went for it words are dangerous I pray for you in the name of Jesus the son of the living God if there is any word fighting you fighting your family if there is any grace fighting you closing every door by the mercy and the God of the eternal covenant I declare may the blood speak for you tonight if any pronouncement whether demonic even if it is by a man of God and it is programmed at programming at bringing eels I stand by the God of my salvation and I speak to you let mercy speak now I pray for you finally by the spirit of grace whatever must move you forward between now and the end of this year to fulfill what God has said please believe what I'm saying I stand in the name of Jesus and I push you into that world whatever you must hear whatever grace must come upon you whatever connection must come upon your life to see to it that the spoken word the rima of God makes for a performance in your life I declare enter into that word anyone here under the sound of my voice appointed unto death that the earth is calling you and the grave is calling you Hades is calling you I stand by the spirit of God I command the voice of death to be silenced now hear me listen to me men casted lots to know the exact day to bring trouble to the Jews whatever programming is waiting for you in the future to bring you down to destroy you to impede your progress already finished by darkness I stand as a carpenter in the name of Jesus I scatter every planting that is not of God I scatter every planting that is not of God I scatter every planting that is not of God I scatter every planting that is not of God here who is currently under any demonic siege you do not even know but you are under a strong influence of the powers of darkness right now in the name of Jesus I speak to those spirits by the God of Jeshurun and I declare let God's people go now let God's people go now let their families go now let their finances go now let their spiritual lives be free now thank you for lifting thank you for lifting thank you for lifting my head one more time I thank you for lifting thank you for lifting 
Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting. Father, tonight, honor your word over everyone that has been spoken. Let there be a strange performance in the mighty name of Jesus. Please remain standing. I apologize. Our time is gone. Everyone, please remain standing. You are in this place. And while I was talking... The Spirit of God was through my voice speaking to you too. And he was telling you that it is a new season for you. But you to start with you making a declaration for Jesus. Listen very carefully. If you belong to that category, you are saying, Apostle, I've never truly given my heart to Jesus Christ. Or I need to rededicate my life sincerely. Wherever you are. Overflow one, two, overflow three. I will request that you just move to the front of your projector stand. You are in this place. Please run out quickly. Our time is gone. Come and stand in front here. God bless you. Bless you, my dear brother. God bless you. Koinonia, is this the best you can do? Celebrate that. If you are coming, please come quickly. Come quickly. Hallelujah. Come quickly. God bless you. I celebrate every one of you. The Bible says whoever will come to him, he will in no wise cast away. I salute your courage to make this decision for Jesus. May I request that you lift your right hand, every one of you. Say this after me, mean it from the depth of your heart. Say, Lord Jesus. If you're joining them, please come quickly. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God. A few people coming, please quickly come join them. Join them. God bless you. Say after me, Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God. Tonight, I declare that you are my Lord, you are my Savior. And you are my king. I receive by faith the gift of righteousness and the abundance of grace. And I declare that I reign in this life. Tonight and forever, eternal life is mine. I am a child of God. I am the son of the kingdom. Amen. Keep your hands lifted. Jesus, these are the ones that you died for. And we honor you for granting them the grace to heed to your call. I pray that you will keep them. I pray that you will bless them. I pray that you will honor them. In the name of Jesus. That everything that is not the planting of God, I come against it now in Jesus' name. May the Lord himself and even by his spirit do a miracle for you. From today, you move forward ever and backward never. Your relationship with the Lord is strengthened and you will continue to go from glory to glory. In the name of Jesus, amen and amen. God bless you. Please, I'd like you to follow this gentleman waving his hands, all of you. God bless you. Let's celebrate them as they go. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. We believe you are mightily blessed. To connect with the ministry and get more from Apostle Joshua Selman, follow us on Facebook and Twitter at Koinonia ENI. To stream Koinonia Live, go to Mixler.com forward slash Koinonia And download the teachings on KoinoniaSermons.org. For questions and inquiries, call 0814-721-4444 or 0907 777 We love and send